bear with me. My chat is still loading right now because my laptop is not letting it function today, it looks like. Is it really not going to work? Come on. Alright, we are going to go ahead and get going with the China Millennium Dawn game I've been promising for well over a month now. Uh, I currently don't have my streaming chat because my laptop is not loading the internet for some reason, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, generally speaking, I am also a little sick today, I'm going to be honest. Uh, I'll, I'll have a stomach bug or something, so I may be kind of low energy and uh, possibly having to go to the basketball in the middle of things, so be warned. But generally speaking, we are going to be starting the China Millennium Dawn game. Now, I wanted to do this for quite a while. I made a sub goal for it, I think, probably around a month or two back, which was reached. And uh, I initially planned to start it immediately with a single player roleplay, because I, I thought that that would be fun. It's what I did around a year ago this time, and I did enjoy it a lot. But I honestly just felt that wouldn't be as interesting as doing like a really good multiplayer tiered roleplay with China, which is what we're going to go ahead and do now. So this is a tiered game. The tiered system in the server is what we use to differentiate good role players from mediocre ones. So theoretically, this game should have a very high quality of role play. Whether that actually happens or not, we will find out. But generally th speaking, I thought it'd be more fun to do this playthrough uh, in a multiplayer game. Because I really do think that they're more entertaining and more enjoyable, more fun to watch. And then I'm obviously going to be making this into a YouTube series, so... Uh, I, I think that'll just be generally better and more entertaining in multiplayer roleplay, which, I, as I think most people know at this point, I just do a lot of that at this point. How's it going, at Warrior Oil? What's up, mage? I don't... Yes, I have to set up my initial stuff if you do not mind. I appreciate it, thank you. We are China, so we're going to be involved with diplomacy probably the whole game. But I do want to get my initial stuff set up here, so I'm not just desperately trying to catch up with the multitasking that is required in Millennium Dawn. I will return in a moment. I have to ask one more question. Sounds good. Hello. Hello. Would you mind giving me like a five minutes to set my stuff up? Yep, I'll do that. Thank you. Mainly to figure out what is going on with my laptop right now. I thought I fixed this last night. Okay. See if this works or if my laptop is just not going to function today. Oh, what the fuck? There we go. What's up, Turk? Uh, Even a prime uh, man. Appreciate it, Turk. Sisa. You're a simp. 
I'm gonna have to report you back to the chat. Chat is working. What's up, King Yeetbuck? How many sessions? We haven't determined how many this will be. At least four. So, how good is multiplayer in Millennium Dawn? It's fantastic, Willis. Uh, if you're with the right group of people. When done right, it's fantastic. When done wrong, it turns into an incredibly unbalanced um, competitive shit show. But, when it's done right, so good. I'm going to briefly outline what we're going to do politically in this game. I won't give all the spoilers, but generally speaking, I'm going to basically be role-playing a China in 2000 under Z Min not stepping down and transitioning to a conciliatory stance towards Asia and Western democracies and incorporating themselves fully into the Western economic framework. So we will not attempt to really maintain the hardcore conservative uh, politics that obviously defined early modern China. We're going to be going away from the more hardliners uh, and, and kind of continue in the vein of reform that kind of results in a hybrid economic and political ideology built around economic prosperity. Uh, socialism with Chinese characteristics as well as generally some pretty dramatic policy changes that I will role play out. You'll see those a lot of them. But generally speaking, we're going to continue down the the route that kind of involves a lot more capitalism which we've already begun right the special like trade zones in china on the coast are basically capitalism with extra steps we'll continue off that model and uh change change some of our policy quite dramatically the general idea being we're going to work with the west work with other asian countries rather than viewing ourselves as an explicit rival so that's the plan enjoyed your youtube content a lot this week just started playing uh, myself with hoi4 and md i'm glad you enjoy it turk I'm glad to hear that, man. That's good. Did you did you get started on the MD vids? I assume it's a lot of fun, but it can be a little rough to learn. I don't care if you've ever done army at 64 widths because in single player it's very OP. Which type of army at 64 widths? Mao Zedong. Tiananmen. This is a meme on Chinese web. By the way, you can watch them when you have a free time. Sure. If we if we have a little bit of spare time, we'll go do that. I want to uh, start by saying that I did do a post before this game even started. Let me get the Chinese music back on here. Um, wherein we we outlined our vision for the 21st century. And I defined it as the five steps to true prosperity. One is energy independence and resource stability, aka the water crisis we have among the massive oil and fuel dependency we have on the West, primarily the Middle East and our trade partners including Russia, which we have a natural land border with, but the amount of oil and fuel needed to really power China, we can't produce it domestically. So we need to find a way to become energy reliant. Number two, a cooperative and conciliatory foreign policy to all of Asia, meaning in the past, we saw the Asian Tigers, Japan, and India as economic rivals, which they are. However, going forward, the Zemin and CCP parties' position on that will be through conciliation and cooperation, our innate national strength, such as our population and economic power, will make us the senior partner in such an arrangement and can benefit us. Number three, the creation of an export economy through quality and investment, aka we are going to actively cooperate with the West and what they desire in order to be able to uh, uh, build a economic system wherein we are getting invested in heavily as we have in the past as the Asian Tigers are no longer as prominent after the uh, Asian financial crisis. And if we can work enough with the West, we'll be able to take on a lot of that capital flow. Number four, developing the coastal region and pulling the wealth inside of us. This is a policy Zeman has already implemented, wherein the special economic zones on the coast, wherein there are lower taxes and government subsidies, as well as just a general focus on industrialization and job creation, will be continued to be focused on. But the idea is we're going to continue to implement policies where that wealth is pushed into the interior and rural areas of China, which historically, especially in recent times, been very poor due to a lack of focus from the government. So we're going to double down on that and continue to try and use that system. And number five, lastly, embracing the Western economic system and thriving through it. We are going to continue to get even more dramatic in our policy changes, which will allow for as we're call it, capitalism, uh, Chinese capitalism with socialist characteristics, aka we are going to make a hybrid government and fully call it what it is and system. So that's where we're at. Out of RP, Patrick, can you put it on three speed? Yes, uh, I was just making sure that Hami was caught up, so I let it on two speed. Because it lags really bad on two. Uh, yes. Uh, 
Hummy, are you available for our keynote? Yes. Yes. Uh, hello, Mr. Zamin. This is uh, Leonid Kochma of the uh, recently uh, created Ukrainian government. How are you? I am quite well, but a very busy man. What brings the Ukrainian ambassador to uh, Beijing at this time? I have come to offer you a grand trade deal that I believe would greatly benefit your country. Uh, uh, I had heard your uh, speech to your people the other day, uh, t uh, talking of uh, your grand population, and I know in the past you have had uh, mismanaged food services uh, to your people, uh, or not services, sorry, security. Uh, I know that a, a lot of... Uh, specific people in your government have uh, had corruption and uh, created these food shortages and i would like to ask uh china for some foreign food security options uh, i would like uh to ask for investments in uh the agricultural department of uh, sveria and uh Slobata. Uh, to increase the wheat production to be exclusively exported to China. Assuming reasonable rates could be worked out for such a system, uh, we would be happy to do so. I will make it abundantly clear that China is seeking to become in many ways fully reliant resource-wise. So in the future, although we are happy to build a trade agreement with you providing uh, food imports to China, which is always needed, I will also caution you by saying that China is going to look to uh, provide them domestically, though that will take quite some time. Uh, we are open to such a proposal. Uh, since you are on fairly good footing with our good friends in Moscow, we have no issue with this stance. We would like to ask your general perspective on the EU's foreign and especially economic policy going forward and, and how that relates to any deals you might have with China. Uh, regarding uh, that, uh, the recent increase uh, in the Fatherland Party, uh, uh, created right uh, as Ukraine uh, formally gained its independence. Uh, we believe uh, that the Soviet Union, uh, and I had spoke with Mr. Putin about this before, uh, that the Soviet Union was a failed state because of its increasing centralization. Uh, as such, uh, we believe a more decentralized EU is a good economic path for the Ukraine to go to. Uh, I have not had uh, the pleasure of being able to talk with any of their leaders just yet, but Ukraine is looking forward to moving towards the EU, but staying out of any military alliances or commitments. That is good to hear. China is working to build an economic partnership in Asia. The wealth innate there through investment internationally, as well as our partnerships with other major powers such as Britain, uh, the United States, and Russia come first to us. We do view the EU to be a danger to the economic future and independence of European actors. So we would at least caution you to consider any explicit and exclusive deals with the EU and the dangers that come in with cooperating with that uh, economic zone. But uh, uh, yes, uh, the the idealisms of our uh, economic minister is that any country that would sign an individual deal with Ukraine would have priority over anybody that has a block deal in uh, That's good to hear. I know there's been be talks a... of like EU first investment, EU first uh, economic policy, and that's something that uh, China is very wary of. I have uh, spoken to Mr. Putin first about this, and then you second. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I do believe I would have to give Putin that respect to go to him first. Uh, I understand. They, they are they are good friends of the Chinese government. Beijing and Moscow have a fantastic working relationship, as we have since the beginnings of our newfound uh, power and, and status, of course. Oh, except for the Sino split. There's no need to bring such things up here. We are good friends. Of course, of course. It was just lighthearted. Indeed. Um, uh, but regarding that, I am offering, uh, before I speak to any Western powers, I will speak to the powers I am known to uh, much more, as Russia and China have both recognized Ukraine. Sh before, Sh here's the deal uh, China would be willing to offer you. We'd be willing to offer you $60 billion of investments right now, with that uh, being reevaluated every year. Uh, we would require 40 
billion investments back into China in the form of coastal manufacturing in our cities. Uh, and we would be able to work out, obviously, an, an import deal of the wheat and other uh, foodstuffs that Ukraine would be able to export us, obviously, assuming those fees could be very reasonable. Uh, the manufacturing, uh, Ukraine is very well known for its ability to build large barges uh, and aircraft carriers. Uh, possibly I would be able to send some technicians over to help with your shipbuilding processes to make them a more modern process. That would be very welcome. Although the Chinese military is more than capable of producing cutting edge military vessels, which can rival everything the West has to offer. We are always open to uh, uh, such such a thing. I believe there was a mistranslation. I was not speaking of military. Uh, I was saying at, at scale. Uh, aircraft carriers are very large. I understand, but you are speaking of an, an innately uh, military based vessel. True. I, I believe I uh, translated that. Wonderful. We just uh, we received thirty billion from you and another thirty. And where is it? I know you had an explicit place that uh, you wanted invested in. I okay. Hold on. Wait. It says none of these have gone through. Sometimes uh, it glitches. Let me look. Shanghai the Shanghai one went through. One? The other one did not. If you send another one. Where were the places uh, that you wanted investments, uh, President Kushma? Uh, the border of Russia. I would like to buy 10,000 tractors from uh, Guangdao. You're looking for the Donbas or the Slobada, uh, Ukraine? Uh, Siberia and Slobada, Ukraine. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Zemin. I must now be on my way uh, to... Wonderful. Good doing business with you. And I hope when you are in Moscow, you will give my formal compliments to uh, Mr. Putin. And I hope that we can cooperate together as China and Russia begin to build economic zones and cooperate with the West. Thank you for your time. Of course. Have a good day, sir. What's up, Aminon? Good to see you, man. How you doing? Five steps to true Chinese prosperity. One, get up in the morning. Two, declare ourselves an apartment height. Three, fall down the stairs. Fucking tingle. What's up, man? What's up, Lollipop? What's up, Scoby? All right, now we do the fun talk. This is where things go very alt history. Hello. Greetings. This is Greetings. a Chinese military vessel off the coast of Taipei. We are formally yeah. requesting that Chairman Zemin be allowed to land in Taipei and conduct a historic negotiation with the Taiwanese leadership. Uh, we request for this to happen after the elections as we fear that any talks will be quite useless after a potential new party may be elected into power. It is entirely due to those elections that we feel is so pivotal to speak now given the potential loss of the Kuomintang in power. Very well, we will um, uh, signal our uh, military to uh, go wonderful. And stand. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Ready to go ahead and dock, dock the ship then. Should this be televised for the press or should we keep this more secret? It is televised. We have brought our own uh, CCP uh, Media News uh, Corporation and uh, cameras here to uh, televise this event, which we view as being absolutely historical. Yeah, very well. I want to use this as well, but we're lacking in the poll numbers. Um, President Tu Hing, I am, of course, Chairman Zemin. Our yes. two peoples have had much struggle and many problems since we found ourselves in this particular situation i want to take a formal moment to speak to the taiwanese people as well as the chinese people at home and yourself and say that from this day forward china will be acknowledging taiwan as an independent entity and from this day forward we will only be pursuing a two china policy we understand that things are not as many would wish. The conservatives in China have called on for generations for uh, warmongering and potentially even an invasion of Taiwan. And although until up and now we did not recognize it as an independent state, which it was not in our eyes, in an attempt to define a new era for China in the modern world, one where we work with the Americans, the Russians, and the West, we are going to seek to take a dramatic reevaluation of our foreign policy, starting with Taiwan. 
As long as the Kuomintang are in government, a party which China is willing to work with, we view you as independent and will cooperate with you from this day forward. Would you would you allow me to shake your hand, sir? Of course, of course. Wonderful. We are, definitely appreciate this. Though, um, we are we want to actually further close in our economic ties together. Uh, Taiwan officially entered a stagnation period recently after several Taiwanese banks failed, and we um, worry that on top of the 1990s. Uh, 1997 Asian financial crisis. Um, Taiwan's economy has not been looking good, and investors have been really. Um, you are one of the Asian tigers, which, although has come back strong, a testament to the power of Chinese people. Although we differ in government, we share in our common ancestry and the hardworking nature that makes all Chinese people able to overcome. China, in order to help you out of this situation and to find a new era of friendship as part of a treaty that we can work out today, would like to announce its willingness to invest $150 billion, no strings attached, into Taiwan. As you know, we have pursued the exclusive economic zones in the coastal areas, and we find that your system to be working similarly, and would like to offer you, as part of a treaty, uh, outlining uh, shared fishing rights and military presence in the coastal waters between us as well as general economic and political cooperation 150 billion in investments if that is something that your country would be open to these fishing rights um how much fishing boats will be entered entering uh the taiwan strait we would propose the establishment of a joint uh naval authority in the coastal chinese sea where both of us lie claim to that would be obviously negotiated and cooperated with both the Taiwan government and the Chinese uh, government. And would oh, have a mutual, obviously, say over negotiating uh, those those rights. I think we could um, agree to this. Wonderful. In that case, I would like to sit down with you for a few hours. I also want to take a moment while the cameras are still here to take a moment to speak to the Taiwan people. It is only with the Kuomintang that we see a future for our cooperation. Let me say decisively that China is wishing to build a new era between our two states. But we need to work with someone that we think we can cooperate with. And President Ting Hui here is a man that I know I can work with. And I hope that uh, come election time, the people of Taiwan consider this when they go to the polls. There is one last thing I would like to uh, begin to negotiate with you. We'll have the details worked out, but China will be shortly announcing its uh, willingness to ne renegotiate its claims on the South China Sea. And we'd like to have Taiwan involved in those talks and help uh, cooperate so that we can find a middle ground between our claims of the South China Sea and the treaty established with the United Nations being found with the international zone there. Would Taiwan be willing to help us renegotiate and find an equitable solution there for China and its Southeast Asian allies? Of course, we want peace in Asia as we feel that uh, peace can help uh, economic growth. Though I do think this meeting might have to cut short as the elections are actually underway. Of course, I will leave you be and I hope that the people of Taiwan choose a good future. We will talk soon, I hope, as equals, if not uh, as friends, you will always be able to speak with me. Thank you for your time. Very well, I'll see you later. All right, we got to run out of post. God damn it, why do you always do this when I'm not able to use your computer? I'm still in your chat, aren't I? Let me leave. The People's Republic of China negotiating with the Republic of China. This is the darkest timeline. We're going to go very old history in this game. So be warned. All right. Let me go ahead and write out a quick news report. Or a statement from the CCP. It wasn't impossible something like this happened. Just very unlikely given the factions that existed in the government at this time. But Zeman was willing to, to take some pretty dramatic changes. And I think if certain people had gotten into power and influenced them something like this would have been possible that being said i fully acknowledge this game is going to be all history so if you want hyper historical chinese realism it's not the game for you let me let me say that very clearly how's it going roasted gamer and thank you for the follow jarhead statements from chairman Zeman. Today, we announce the end of our hostile status to Taiwan. A model where our people and government ignore reality in the face 
of evidence for pure ideology must not define our policy. I announce alongside my counterpart in Taiwan the form formal acknowledgement of the two China policy. From henceforth, we acknowledge their right to independence and our willingness to cooperate in all things. Man, I wish their spell check actually worked. I rely so heavily on spell check when something like this doesn't have it working. It's brutal uh, in all things. We will be cooperating their government to begin a mutual investment scheme and to help build each other up. It's time for China to become the wise elder in Asia and help guide all its people into a new economic future of prosperity as we enter a global economy. Can I play with you? In some games, yes, Roasted Gamer. You're welcome to join the Discord and join our games. Uh, this is a tiered game, so we only allow people into this game if they have like a very good proven track record uh, of, of like quality roleplay in our server. This is the first, uh, I think, tiered game we've ever done for Millennium Dawn. So we'll see how this goes. But most games are joinable, yes. Okay. Wait though, Ham, why do you always do Hoi 4 RPMP when I'm not home? Well, see, I, I, I actually stalk you in real life, Canadian, and I, I figured out your schedule, so I always time it right when you're gone. Also, be warned, guys, I might be going to the bathroom and I'm going to sweat a lot because I am kind of sick right now. All right, join the WTO. For too long, we have been excluded from the benefits of global trade shared among members of the WTO. This will change now that our ascension to the International Trading Organization is complete, and we can better use the institutions of the West Liberal Economic Order to our advantage. You don't have a schedule? Yeah, I know, but I figured it out. Break the Iron Rice Bowl. The Iron Rice Bowl is the widespread provision of job security and benefits to employees in the public sector and in state-owned enterprises. While this has served our country well in the past, a precondition of ascension, the WTO is doing away with this practice, which is, you know, private markets. Uh, are there, uh, as there are multiple sessions, as I understand it, is it okay if you do not have time for all sessions? No, yeah, you don't have to show up for all of them. We, the, if you're playing a really big country like China or Russia, we do try and ask that you try and show up for all of them. But we understand that life gets in the way of things, right? So, no. It's not expected. Especially as a small country. Alright. Let's look at our economy and we'll go over our national spirits. Well, there's a bit of a lull in the roleplay here. We do have some more things to go talk to with some folks. Uh, we are running a pretty good surplus at a 22% population tax rate. We have an 18% corporate tax rate. We have a surplus of around 12 billion, 107 uh, civilian factories, 27 mills, 11 dockyards, and 39 office complex for a grand total of 4.75 uh, billion uh, GDP, or 4.75 trillion, I apologize. Our GDP per capita is sitting at 3.7 thousand, which is very low, meaning our people are not very wealthy. There's a lot of... Um, inaccuracy in the statistic due to the innate uh, wealth inequality that exists within China. Where in the coastal regions, the coastal cities and the coastal economic zones are a lot more prosperous than the rural area. There's a quote from, I wanna say Z Min, but it might have been Deng, where he said that uh, some people will get rich quicker in China. The idea being that the government focused on coastal regions economically in order to create a middle and uh, burgeoning middle class and industrialize those areas before the rule, which still exists to this case day. So this GDP per capita, it's not really indicative of the general quality of China. The coastal areas are not very poor. I mean, they are poor, but not as poor. The rural areas are very poor. So important to remember that. 
We're going to go ahead and keep things how they are here, as this is not too bad for us. What's up, Razzy? You want to join for like three months now? You'll find that time, Canadian. I still think you did us dirty by uh, only playing Luxembourg for one stream. That is true. That is true. But to be honest, guys, I got really burned out on Hoi 4. I kind of took a break. That pr should be pretty clear by now. So I'm going to start doing more Hoi 4. But I needed to take a bit of a break from it. I got pretty burned out on some of the well, multiplayer uh, stuff. Uh, Even a resub, well, Moose. There's no real easy way to say this, but... Uh, look, you're a sim. I'm going to have to report you back to this guy. We're going to go ahead and centralize the bureaucratic state underneath Zemin with many party officials as a part of the Shanghai clique. And there are several cliques, but we have the most powerful one currently, which we are going to continue to build up as it supports our aims and what we desire to do here. Hello, Have... Mark. Greetings. Welcome to Beijing. The Prime Minister of Australia. Ah. Well, you're speaking to. Prime Minister Howard, welcome to Beijing. Please take what? a seat. Would you like uh, a coffee, a tea, perhaps? Anything that the uh, party can provide you? I don't do. I don't partake in the coffee. Makes me uh, makes me have the Hershey squirts in the morning. You know what I mean? I do not. But uh, very well. We will get get, get this man a tea. Take take a seat. Take a seat. Welcome. What can the People's Republic of China do for Australia? We we're wondering if we could possibly uh, talk about an investment deal with each other. Uh, if you would. Possibly, uh, you invest maybe one infrastructure, and we can invest one civilian uh, industry in whatever province you so wish for us to choose. Uh, the reason why I'm coming to you with this is because the Australian people and the Australian Parliament have just recently unanimously, uh, unanimously decided to uh, form our, our own space industry, our own space program called ARS. No correlation to the actual uh, botox, but called the Australian Research and Space Exploration Industry uh, Agency, ARS for short. You are seeking to do this independent of the Commonwealth that I assume and the ESA, you're making an independent space agency? Yes, to further not only to further global, uh, global partnership and to also help in that uh, global effort of helping global warming and uh, the repairing of our ozone, but also to uh, produce our own satellites for our own people um like gps and all that as well and to uh further help with the uh the elimination of space debris as you you may know you have your own space program space debris uh that is left over by us by you know all i do have the reports on this issue primarily the americans leaving their junk up in space but uh yeah they are the the one who are primarily up there at this moment i think a, a deal could be worked out here uh, Mr. Howard. Uh, China is also very interested in the uh, research and procurement of a useful space technologies and a space program. The CSTO, I believe is what it's called. I could be wrong. Uh, it, it takes pride in beginning to become competitive to, towards the uh, Western systems. We are happy to cooperate with Australia, but I would like to say very briefly that I'd like to hear your general's perspective on the Asian economic zone and generally your perspective on how China and Australia can cooperate economically because you've relied primarily upon Britain, Europe, and the Americans in the past. And we'd like to build a relationship with you, but we'd like to, to hear it from your own mouth whether you are really willing to work with China. So economically, we'd be definitely willing to work with anyone as uh, working with anyone and working freely with anyone is uh, the best for our economy. However, um, there is a one concern. We are a free nation. We do believe in liberty and free elections. And China does not have elections, I do not believe, right? Uh, we do not. So, as you all well know, we are a one party state. Yes. However, um, we understand that, you know, your nation is independent and you have your own sovereignty and you have all, uh, you know, you have the right to, to dictate your guys' way of life as so. However, um, if you are willing to, if you're willing to once again guarantee the, uh, the treaty between your nation and the nation of Great Britain in regards to Hong Kong, uh, we'd be more than willing to be although we are we are happy to discuss the situation uh with the united kingdom that is something that we will do independently between uh, ourselves and them i know you're a part of the commonwealth but that is a matter for us to discuss uh, internally with them. Why, uh, though as i'm sure you are very aware china is uh changing their policy to a conciliatory stance to all of asia 
So that should speak for for that. All right. Well, as long as you ain't going to be threatening any uh, any neighboring nations, and you know, and you are uh, on the agreement that you will respect other people's sovereignties and their uh, their way of life, especially uh, freedom and liberty, uh, we'd be more than willing to uh, be friendly with you in terms of trade, Mike. That's good to hear. That's very good to hear. There are many resources in Australia that uh, China could definitely use and would not have to import from so far away as we do view the Molokka Strait to be very strategically dangerous in Australia having the ability to circumnavigate that. Uh, I'd like to then offer you the proposal that uh, China would be willing to do a 100 for 100 billion dollar investment between China and Australia. We would also ask that you give us preferred trading status for the rare earth materials in Australia that China will be desperately in need of as we ramp up our industrial output, especially of more specialized uh, technological ma materials. Rare earth, you mean the precious metals? And technology metals, indeed. Technology metals, mm -hmm. all right. Um, we have agreements with other nations as well for those precious metals, uh, for those technology metals, but- We're not asking Australia? for an exclusive trade deal, we're asking for preferred trading status, which is very different. All right. Um, yeah, we definitely uh, prefer Asian nations over the Western nations as they have more than the capabilities of providing for themselves. It's very uh, good to we'll hear. Definitely, uh, we'll definitely, we'll definitely uh, be interested in that as well. So you said a one billion for a one hundred billion for one hundred billion. One hundred billion, indeed. And if you could concentrate that primarily in the uh, Shandong Peninsula and in the Tianjin region, just to the south of Beijing, we would appreciate that. Right, Any preference on where Chinese investors uh, want to uh, put money into in your own country? 5.5 billion in the Shandong Peninsula. And you said the other one was what? Tianjin, just to the south of Beijing. On the coast. Where would you like yours? Uh, Shang... Oh, right next to the peninsula. That's it. All right, I'll uh, invest another... I'll be investing... Uh, Another 55.5 billion as well there. All right. Um, could you possibly do uh, a split? Uh, can you do a mix? By the I, way, I can do up to two. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, can you do one in New South Wales and one in Victoria, please? That would be much appreciated. There you are. Thank Wonderful. You. I would also just like to, before I leave, to say that China is looking to build a deeper economic partnership in Asia. As you know, there is the Shanghai Five system that currently uh, is fairly involved in economic affairs in Asia. But we'd like to see that expanded in the future as well as cooperation with Asia. And we would love for Australia to be a partner in that. Um, I need, and so I'm not able to, unfortunately, under the Constitution of Australia, uh, decide that by myself i need to have i'm well aware of this that's something we plan on setting up right now either i just like to make uh, it clear that shun is interested in uh cooperation and a much deeper level going into the future and i hope that you and your country uh keep that in mind going into the future we'll be more than willing to keep that in mind mike well, wonderful well thank you for your time all right mike you stay safe now you as well So I have a friend who escaped in a sense from Kami China and he was around three at the time when they were taking over his parents, told him stories about what they did the Asian government in the early years and he said that it, oddly on point with how the US government is doing things in the civil war is coming. No, it's going now so civil war is coming. In America? I don't think a civil war is going to come. I think there will be a lot of like uh, domestic unrest after hopefully Trump's indicted for trying to orchestrate a coup on the US government but I don't think that'll go into civil war. It'll just result in a lot of like far right people protesting and probably some violence. Look at how it is uh, going. They try to disarm the nation, which is the only reason no one's tried to disarm the nation at all. Uh, but the only reason we haven't been invaded during the wars is populace is armed. We haven't been invaded because we had nuclear weapons and a huge military. Uh, even the Russians during the Cold War said they would not be able to invade. Yeah, but that's more again due to the nuclear arms that we have as well as just generally a very uh, militarized society in America. Okay. Let's go see if we can speak with Mr. Putin. Is this uh, is this phone call uh, currently working? This is working. Wonderful. I'm speaking with. It's, uh, this is a call from uh, Chairman Zemin here in Beijing. I just would like to open up uh, a conversation with you, uh, President Putin. It's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Zemin. 
Um, we want to make a special announcement right now to, to your nation. Russia will stay committed to the One China policy, and I think you, you're pleased to hear that. I, you clearly uh, have not read the news. I took a historical trip to Taipei, uh, where I spoke oh. with the leadership of the Kuomintang and made it clear that from this day forward, or I believe that was around a month back, uh, China will be seeking a two-China policy from here on out. Okay, I understand. We I understand, have formally yeah. acknowledged the independence of Taiwan as an independent entity, and we'll cooperate with them on that basis going forward. I understand. This is this is a great step forward uh, for diplomacy and world peace. Uh, I'm sorry, I've been busy with the. Uh, I understand you're a, you're a busy man. Stuff. Yep. You've had a lot so of uh, internal issues, I'm aware, in uh, the southern region, and uh, I completely understand. Yes. I would like to have a very uh, frank talk with you, Mr. Putin. Uh, in regards explicitly to Asia, but also to our own economic deal. As I'm sure you are aware, the five paths to prosperity that I have uh, dictated for the future of China's foreign and domestic policy uh, wishes to undergo a reevaluation of Asia by China. We have kind of seen ourselves at odds with the Japanese, the South Korean, Southeast Asia, Asian as a whole, and India primarily due to their cooperation reliance upon the West. However, now that China is explicitly going to be putting in place reforms where we become a part of the global economic system that the West has created, we no longer see that being of use to China. We want to see a much more heavily cooperated economic zone and for China to be much more involved in the politics of Asian and economic partners. Russia is, of course, an Eastern power. You have been since you colonized the Siberian region hundreds of years ago. And although I know the Sino split, Sino split has made us a little bit at odds, I would like to uh, talk with you about the possibility of cooperating jointly to build an economic zone together. If we were to cooperate, Mr. Putin, ourselves and our allies, if we were to build them, could make up the majority of the population and the economic power of the planet if we work together. We are very interested in the proposal, Mr. Zimmerman. Um, of course, the West has been very dominant in Asia and elsewhere. And quite frankly, we seek to, to change that. And if we get China to help us with that, then it will be wonderful to us. So Russia is really interested in that. That's good to hear. We are looking to expand the Shanghai Five uh, group in the future, as we feel that that is the closest thing we have to an entity that we can uh, build off of. I am going to be primarily focused on the um, resource crisis that we have in the water crisis above all else, as well as opening ourselves up to the Western economic system. However, when that is done, as well as several other of the uh, political reforms I wish to do, I'd like to have a proper sit down with all the members of the Shanghai Five and uh, potentially talk about how we can build that into a proper economic and political system in the East. Although I don't wish us to uh, be at odds with the West, I think that there's no reason we can't have some overlap with an economic zone that we create here, if you understand what I'm saying. Yes, I do completely understand that and I feel the same way, uh, Mr. Zimin. Um Regarding uh, Taiwan or the Republic of China, um, since you abandoned, abandoned the One China policy, basically, uh, is Russia basically now allowed to do investments and trade with uh, Taiwan without uh, of course. having bad relations with uh, China? We acknowledge them as a partner from this day forward, so of course. That is good to hear. That is good to hear. I also, the, I also hope that China is recognizing that uh, actually the nation of Sudan has been reintegrating South Sudan. And I was urged by President al-Bashir to, to make the, 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 the world stage aware that he did not commit any war crimes and that he should be rebranded as a president, not as a war crime. Uh, yeah, as a, someone that committed war crimes. That's a very and complicated just... situation, as you know. China is, of course, involving itself a lot more in African uh, economic affairs. But uh, the Sudan situation has caused a lot of unrest with Western nations, ones that we are wishing to build economic relationships with. So I think for now, uh, China will probably take a, a, a neutral stance on that. I understand. Um, for me, of course, for Russia, Russia did um, send peacekeepers into Sudan, as requested by Mr. al-Bashir. And they're currently active in the in the city of Juba in South Sudan, helping keeping 
uh, the peace there and help developing your nation. I fully um, understand and you're welcome to pursue any policy you want internally with Sudan. However, China will not uh, ever allow or advocate for the explicit uh, cooing or for uh, wars of offense by volunteers of any of their, their partners within the African region, which we view as uh, pivotal to the future of Chinese uh, economic foreign policy. I understand. We do not want to challenge China at all in, in, in Africa. Just to make and it we don't clear. want to step um, on Russia's toes, but we have to understand that if we wish to cooperate, which I think we both do, Mr. Putin, we need to be uh, in active communication, not attempt to uh, harm either of our interests. Of course, uh, this is mostly, this is important to me as well. Uh, we understand. see China as a strong partner. That's good to hear. And, and not as an adversary, uh, so to speak. In that case, we would yeah. like to uh, formally offer you 100 billion no strings attached investments as we are going to continue to uh, cooperate. China came out of the Asian crisis in, frankly, a very good shape. Our currency was not devalued, and as such, we are very strong economically within the region. I know that Russia suffered a little bit more, and we'd like to, as part of our uh, newly reinvigorated friendship, offer you a path toward uh, economic rebuilding. That would be mostly appreciated, Mr. Zimmerman. Uh, Russia could use that right now. Wonderful. We are right now um, overcoming the crisis. And uh, we hope that all of this can help us go out even stronger into the future. This through crisis has been... Through adversity, very... one finds their strength. Of course. Of course. Is there anything else I can do for you, Mr. Putin, that you'd like to discuss while we're on this phone call? Not right now. If something comes up regarding Ukraine, because there's something brewing right there, I would say, I will call you and like, I will call you and uh, get your opinion, and maybe you can mediate. But for this, right now, there's nothing to to say right now. To Very well. Discuss. It's good to hear, and uh, we will speak soon, Mr. Putin. We speak soon. Have a good flight uh, back. All right. A lot, of, a lot of stuff to read. I'll do that in a second. My light almost fell down. That was a, that was a quick save there. A beard is going for a new uh, PB growing across your face. Right, the Aussie mate. I did it from the end from the Moot to the Wombat. I, I give it a solid 6.5, Yarl. 6.5. Iran, Russia, and China are gearing up to run a series of major drills in Latin America to show force, meaning to signal how these militaries can reach the United States, Venezuela, under the leadership of the anti-U.S. socialist president, Maduro. Yeah. I is scheduled to host the war games in mid-August, according to a report of the Center of uh, Secure Free Society, think think that tracks Milan regimes. Yeah, it's kind of meaningless, though. Like, I don't know. I, I don't find show of forces and military drills like that to be particularly useful, uh, besides, obviously... Uh, creating military and political cooperation between those countries. Broadly speaking, if there is a war between, like, you know, China, Russia, and the U.S., um, the U.S. military would make it so they couldn't really get much to South America and Latin America, generally speaking, but that's a whole conversation. It's a lot easier to show how something can be done, though, accurately. Beard-shaped hand looks very weird. I'm, I'm aware of that Afghanistan. I'm aware. Have you forgot that Russia was the most advanced fighters in the world? Have you forgotten that we have nuclear weapons and if we ever go to war of another major power, we will go to one thing, and that is nuclear warfare. Just because you're the best fighter doesn't mean you can use it well and that they hold up well in combat. Also that. Oh, we have a typhoon hitting right now. It did a little bit of damage. That's unfortunate, but we'll get resources there immediately to deal with it. Correct. No major power will do by. All right, we've done most of the foreign policy I wanted at this point. That leaves several people to talk to. I will read what we're doing right now, though. Chinese model of manufacturing. The Chinese economy has gotten this far by focusing on quantity and not quality. We should continue manufacturing products in mass at a low cost. Since only two of these are players, we can choose the Americans or the Germans to work with for economic ventures going forward. So, every member of chat right now, every one of you watching, or AFK, or if your dog is currently using your computer, you are all members of the Chinese uh, CCP uh, uh, assembly. So you get to choose on this policy.
This will be who we approach first. They won't necessarily say yes, but we have two options here. How much real life political knowledge do you need to bring to the table to play a minor country? Very little. Being willing to do research, I say, would help. Be being willing to actually take the time to go like learn a little bit about your country, that's what matters more than anything else. As long as you're willing and able to do that, you're fine. And a lot of people come into our games not having even done that, so it's not like the bar's really high. For a tiered game, I do expect you to do some research and know your know your stuff a little bit. This millennium presents new challenges to our government's authority. We should decide whether we wish to respond to these challenges by blocking them or embracing them. And Shadow wants to, they could literally crash all nations trade in hours by shutting down all exports. Yes, but that's also true of the world. If the world ever blockades like the Strait of Malacca, the Indonesian islands, and the US military puts a force of ships over here off the islands, uh, China's economy would collapse within probably a week or two. So that's a two way street. The thing about globalization is it makes all countries reliant on each other. No one is exempt from that, with a couple exceptions, but even then, not really. Fuck, my stomach's fucked up today. <laughs> you see that poll's looking right now? All to Germany. Wow, okay. Oh, fuck, man. We did get Germany today in the game, right? Yes. Excuse me. Who are you speaking to? Hello there. This is a phone call from Chairman Z Min. Ah, score. Uh, I wasn't expecting you today. How may I help? I know this is a very unexpected phone call, uh, uh, Mr. Schroeder, but I, I do feel like we have some very important business to discuss. Not to kind of uh, come out of the blue here, but I'd like to just generally ask the perspective of your government, the SPD party, and yourself uh, on the EU and its uh, centralization and foreign economic policy. We are uh, very, uh, uh, we approved the um union of the we approve the union uh, the european union is something that I, we believe it's a uh, it's very important to germany and i'll dedicate my whole life to the european union in order to keep its stability maintained i think germany plays a big part on this based being the heart of it and being one of the largest economic powerhouse in europe so you view the future of Germany as simply a part of the European Union and uh, having no internal sovereignty? Europe itself, I believe that Europe itself is, is a country. I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but I believe that Europe itself is a country. We're just a bunch of states. But uh, if you see it like that, Mr. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to understand uh, Germany's situation before I move forward with some talks I wish to have with you. We don't have any any situation exactly. I don't know what you're trying to, are you trying to ask. What's my stance in the EU? What I'm essentially asking is Germany capable, willing, and able to uh, make independent economic relationships outside their EU positions. Germany has no problems of uh, doing uh, business outside the EU. That wasn't my question. I'm explicitly asking if you're willing to make independent uh, economic relationships. Of course we are. I, 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 I don't know what world you're living in, Chairman, where we're not free to do that. I'm not saying that you're not free to do that. I'm just well aware of the current uh, EU policy and the discussions happening within that body, which, frankly, uh, China is a little worried about countries being uh, able to act independently. I see. I see. I see. No, Mr. Chairman, don't need to worry about that. We have it all under control. Wonderful. In that case, we'll move on to the much, uh, I believe, more enjoyable aspect of this conversation, which is China seeks a Western outlook approach. As you know, we've joined the WTO and we are seeking to become part more intrinsically of the world economy. As you know, capital flow investment and German exports from Asia have primarily come from the old uh, states such as uh, Japan and, of course, the South uh, Asian Tigers. Wow. China is wishing to become a very powerful 
uh, economic export country. And in order to do so, we need to establish relationships. At present, we already, of course, have a fair amount of investment from the Americans. But the CCP feels as though we need to definitively decide on a country to cooperate with. The name that always kept appearing to us was Germany. And we wish to uh, open the door to discussions on potentially a much stronger economic relationship with Germany. As we do see you and your ports as being uh, intrinsic to all of Europe. As you know, most current trade comes from the ports in the Netherlands. And as part of any deal we wish to negotiate with you, we would like to uh, offer the possibility of Hamburg becoming the staple port for all uh, Chinese exports and imports in and out of Europe. Wow, I'm honored and flattered to uh, hear um, what just came out of your mouth. I mean, I'm very happy to hear that uh, the CCP and you have chose Germany to be its main partner. We but feel as though you have the level-headedness and the quality in terms of expectations and goods exported that you are someone we wish to cooperate with. Um, it makes me very happy, Mr. Chairman. I am really, really on board on this idea, and I'm really happy to be uh, a partner of China. That's fantastic to hear. In that case, I would like to go ahead with the creation of formalized ties between the CCP and the German government, which uh, you should get shortly out of roleplay. I believe it's an event you'll get. Uh, in addition to this, we would like to discuss the possibility of mutual investment, as China does have part of their investment fund currently capable. Primarily, we'd like to suggest the upgrading uh, of the port in Hamburg, as well as general uh, Chinese investments into the uh, German economy as well as Germany putting money into the coastal regions where all of China's uh, industry currently exists. We, 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 yes, we can do that. I think that would be great. Wonderful. Is Germany currently uh, able to do $150 billion in investments? If you can wait just a few weeks, I think we can reach that. About two weeks exactly, and I think I can do that. China is nothing but patient, you will find, so we are happy to do so. Of course, if you want, you can already start um, investing, and we will uh, get back to you. We reach back to you as soon as possible. You should have the paperwork right now to upgrade the coastal regions there, as there will be a lot of materials flowing through uh, northern Germany. We would like to ask if you have the infrastructure you think to become the the hub of Europe for imports and exports as we develop a closer relationship with you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Germany will and can and will become the ports of exports. Wonderful. That's good to hear. In that I case... Wonderful. I'm glad to hear that. And I hope that you are, of course, willing to speak well of China as we are now becoming partners and before, as we take a, a more Western approach to our foreign policy and economics, that you will uh, become a uh, proponent for China in Europe and beyond as we cooperate in the future. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may I just ask, this, this comes as a shock that you are very open to uh, cooperate. No, 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 I'm not criticizing anything. But I find it kind of uh, rather unique. I will be honest with you. We, we, I, I, I understand very well that we are making a dramatic foreign policy and general policy change. There are many within the CCP and within the government who oppose uh, what we are now doing. I, I had been honestly considering retirement in the next couple of years. As you know, I've been in charge of uh, or, or taken a large burden of the responsibility of the CCP's authority upon myself to affect changes over the last decade. But it is now my perspective that some of the successors who have been proposed uh, in the past for me do not understand that the future of China must be one cooperating of the West. Before I retire and before I move on, I want China to have a future that will be one that does not lead to ruin. There are many more conservative hardliners in China which want to return to the more extreme Marxist ideology that defined our early history. I am, of course, a huge proponent and believer in the teachings of Mao. However, modern circumstances requires modern solutions. And I wish to double down upon the recent reforms that I have implemented, as well as my predecessors such as Deng, in order to ensure that China integrates itself into global systems. We cannot be the international pariah forever, despite our cultural differences and our unique uh, ideology. 
Wow. I see. Well, then, uh, I'm very happy to hear about this and how China is changing for the better, in my opinion. Have you talked to the United States about this? Uh, about, uh, uh, have you cooperated with the United States? We have not. We, we are going to speak with them very soon, though. I think uh, Mr. Clinton and I need to have a long talk. We're, Germany is happy to help in the relations between China and the United States, if anything, of course, were to happen. Wonderful. That's very good to hear. Is there any questions you have for us or anything that you would like to discuss as well? No, Mr. Chairman, I think we're happy right now. Wonderful. We, we, we again, uh, we thank your, your, your cooperation towards uh, the Western countries. We're really happy to hear how you are uh, changing the political landscape of China. Of course. And I hope through cooperation we will build a future that benefits us all. We hope, I hope so too. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Wonderful. To me, pretty much all of the military is Republican, me included. I have a pretty uh, pull the drum trigger in, play, uh, in her plane. The, the American military can, tends to be a little bit conservative, but they don't tend to be like far right nationalists, though. Let me clarify that because those, those get very, I think, confused. I mean, there were coastal cities close to Taiwan setting off air raid sirens as she was landing. Oh, yeah, with Pelosi? Okay, we have to go talk to the Americans in a minute as well. Oh, man. I really hope I'm not getting another fucking COVID variant. I've had COVID twice already. I don't think this is COVID. I think it's a stomach bug, but... Fuck me, man. That, I am not in the mood for that. Okay, we'll fight down party corruption by basically... Uh, pushing out party officials who disagree with what we're doing. What's up, Escova? We're going to deal with this one pretty soon as well. Wonderful. Export-driven economy. Relying on consumption alone will not be enough to make China the world's leading economic power. We should use our control over the economy to orient itself towards exporting manufactured goods at the rest of the world. I'm going to make a breaking news article really quickly. All right. Corruption equals you do not have the same opinion as I. <laughs> okay, we gotta go talk to the Americans. Putin and Clinton are currently talking, so we'll have to wait on that account. China the Shing. Hello. Greetings. This is a phone call from Chairman Zemin calling you from Beijing. I hope you're in good health, Prime Minister Vajpayee. I am, I am. Wonderful. And you? I am, uh, Clay Well. I have a bit of a flu at the moment, but it is, uh, nothing of major concern. I hope it is not that SARS virus we've heard in the news. Oh, I, I doubt that. Always oh, possible, but, uh, no, no, I don't think so. The, hel the healthcare in China is far too good for it. 
But Mr. Uh, Von Spey, I, I'm here to talk with you about several uh, issues. First off, as you know, China is trying to enter into a much more open foreign policy going forward with countries that in the past it has perhaps had not the best of relations with. Of course, naturally, I know we have had a bit of a problematic past, primarily due to the Jammu Kashmir situation. Indeed. And I wanted to frankly have a very honest conversation with you about what it will take to mend the fence and start to cooperate in earnest. Mm. I think a first step would be um, for our two nations to have an agreed upon border officially. I would agree. Uh, In particular, between, between our two nations, and also perhaps between uh, India and Pakistan, uh, having three nations which all lay different claims to the same same province, same region is is indeed uh, a factor of de destabilization. It is. Uh, it creates many problems. Well. I mean, obviously, you know that very well. Is you have had numerous conflicts with Pakistan, although you've come out on top. The nuclear nation of all three of us now. Uh, do create a level of danger there that was not as apparent in the past and i think that properly defining this region would be useful i do wonder although we cooperate with pakistan whether uh, musharraf would be open to such a thing that would be my only concern yes that is it i think i think that the crux is with pakistan to be honest i um, the current the current border disputes official with China are quite small small regions uh, between our nations and um, merely one would say um, quite mountains regions which which of the Himalayas well perhaps yes. then Prime Minister Vajpayee we can explicitly deal with what we can control China's very realistic we don't like to deal with possibilities only what we can actually do although i suspect any attempts to define a actual border and not simply a line of control between the pakistani government and yourself would be at best unlikely i am ready here today to open up a discussion of where that will be for china and india perhaps if we can clearly define our contended areas we can deal with a lot of the tension that has stopped us from cooperating in the past as much as we should have I believe, um, if I say so, if, if India would be able to relinquish its claim over Daxai Shin, uh, if, of course, China would relinqu relinquish its claims over the Aranshal Pradesh. And of course, we could do mutual investments as well as, as a part of any That would be agreeable. I, I think a proper uh encompassing treaty between us is something that i i am looking for here uh today so if we both mutually agree to no longer claim each other's territory and define our current borders as those set in stone for the uh infinite future as well as the creation of an economic a cooperation perhaps an economic council as well and mutual investment we could really set the stage for a relationship between our two nations going forward which is going to be one beneficial because although it is easy for myself and yourself and governments to be willing to cooperate we both know it is not that simple we need our people to also understand and find respect for one another mm. indeed especially for my government uh, having having quite strong uh, hindu opposition or perhaps even members of coalition sometimes uh, we we cannot uh, exit a deal with a sense of our national pride humiliated of course um, in that case I would like to offer the possibility that we we continue talks uh, in so a month's time or so uh, on the border wherein I will bring my myself and my government to the border region between uh, Ladakh and Aksai Shin, and on that border we negotiate this treaty and sign it there. Yes. As a show of cooperation. 
Indeed, indeed. Is this agreeable indeed, to you, sir. Prime Minister? It would be, yes, it is. In that case, I will have my government contact uh, yours, and we will work out all the finer points of the detail. How about uh, February 1st, we meet on the border and uh, begin explicit negotiations? Yes, yes. Perfect. I will be here in the Delhi. Uh, yeah, of course. We'll, be, we'll meet uh, in person. Sounds good. Yes. We will speak then. We will. Good day to you, and... Good day. Do another breaking news. How's it being gaming so far? Really good, Crack Jesus. How are you doing? Good to hear from you, man. It's been really fun. It, it, it is pretty solid, quality-wise. So let me just pop a new thing out really quickly. Uh, let's see what I missed. You call a Z-Lander an Aussie, you'll get a few teeth broken over your head. That I do know. Uh, uh, six foot five, really, Scobie? Jesus Christ, man. What's better, dispersed or concentrated industry? It depends, but almost always concentrated. When you switch over to new equipment, its efficiency doesn't get totally fucked. I don't really do strategic bombing, I usually go for fighters, heavy fighters, and cast. Strategic bombers in Millennium Dawn are so overpowered, they're basically not fun, I find. Yeah, true. Scandinavians uh, stole height from the gods long ago. We're going to fully industrialize the coastal regions as well here. We will have to go talk with the British about Hong Kong soon as well. We'll wait until after our treaty with the Indians is finalized. What's up, cookie dealer? By cookie dealer, do you mean baker or... Or do you mean, do you, uh, do you, do you just, like, satisfy people's, like, cookie addictions kind of thing? I'm curious. You deal. Ah, you deal. Cookies. I gotcha. I gotcha, man. Hell yeah. I need more coffee. Fuck, I am so dead today. How was the pizza stream last night? It didn't actually happen, Jesus. I've been, I'm kind of sick right now. I was sick last night, uh... It got better this morning. I was I was in pretty rough shape last night, so I didn't attend the event. Uh, it was I think the average team who was gonna do it, but I just I've been kind of in a, a coma until this morning, where I just pounded a bunch of ibuprofen, tums, and coffee, and I made myself able to function right now, which uh, is, is kind of happening, I guess. At least you're not fake Scandinavian. Factory of the world. Our productive potential shall be now fully unlocked. It's time for us to make our mark on the global economy as the world's center of production. Your wife is Danish. Put on the doll with a sickness touch you and I'll give it a kiss. <laughs> Fuck that. Uh... It wouldn't be, like, the day I have the China stream that I've been planning for literally months that, like, I get fucking... I never get sick, guys. Like, well, it's not... I get sick really rarely. I usually get sick, like, once a year. So... Well, that's not true. Last year, I got COVID twice. But beyond... That was a very special circumstance, you know? So it's really weird. They would follow Cookie Dealer. And... They gotta follow I'm Duke 9 if you're still here. I apologize, but thank you. Should have, should have said thank you early. I, I have a habit of just seeing seeing those notifications, being in a role play, then forgetting that it happened, and that I should say thank you. So, yeah, apologize. I didn't know she was Danish until I looked at her family. Develop Chinese mega projects. 
Now that we have started to unlock China's economic potential, it is possible for us to pursue infrastructure projects on an unprecedented scale. What we are trying to get to is to the water uh, conservation projects that we're going to implement. Including, uh, actually, let me, I'm using notes today. Uh, with the Indians, we have to discuss territory, lines, economic investment, and the river diversion. Four parts of this treaty I want to discuss. Let's go ahead and head over there. It is only almost February 1st. Oh, hello. Greetings. If you give me just a second, I want to play a sound effect for like mountain fucking weather, you know? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Those are going to be meeting on, you know, the Himalayan mountains. Indeed. Here we go. It's rather, rather chilly up here. It's very chilly. I'll be Should honest, I've only... Uh, a coat. I, I as well. Uh, would someone gr mind grabbing me a scarf? I think the pictures will be quite silly, but... Uh, to uh, be warm is far more important. I can not even imagine that we were about to, uh, to have a conflict over these mountains. It's <laughs> it, it is rather quite... beautiful, though, I must say. I think it is fitting for a place of beauty to lead to something as good for our peoples as this treaty could be. Mm. Indeed. Would you like to uh, take a moment? I know, I know you're a religious man. If you'd like to say a prayer. If not, uh, we can begin immediately. Oh. So we, we we can keep this the secular. Uh, I, in, in particular, the conflict with with Pakistan perhaps could be more easily resolved by by, by not bringing religion too much into I this understand. crisis. I was simply making a point, and I hope you understand it. Yes, of course. Thank you for very well. Let us go ahead and begin these discussions then. I think if we go ahead and move into uh, the building we'll be using, it'll be probably a little bit better, as I don't know about you, but I am currently uh, freezing quite badly right now. There are four major topics that the CCP would like to broach in these uh, discussions, which we'll go over individually, which is defining the territorial lines between India and China, the discussion of a economic investment and perhaps the establishment of an economic council overseeing uh, Indian and Chinese investment, as well as the discussion of the expansion of the Shanghai Five and how uh, India might relate to that. And finally, uh, the River Diversion Project, which is being discussed in China, which we wanted to obviously cooperate with you on, uh, if we even plan on doing it. Is that agreeable? Yes. Good. To this bulletin, sir. Are there any explicit topics that the Indian delegation wishes to also discuss here today? Um, in addition to those... Uh not really. I think that the well. those building books are good. Let's get to the first topic, which is the one that has defined so much conflict between our peoples. Not so extreme as that which you've had with Pakistan, but still worthy of serious discussion. Mm. As you know, China has historically claimed the region that you now own, and you have claimed our own region. The CCP feels as though this does not benefit us in any way. This issue has led to a lack of economic cooperation that should exist between our countries as such we would be fully willing to simply define the current lines of control and borders as the permanent ones in perpetuity in this treaty i assume that india is not looking to claim any territory that china currently has under their control we do not uh, certainly the akashai sin as we currently see with this big windows all this beautiful it it's it's, <laughs> any income we would get from it would be so small in comparison to the opportunities laid out in, in these uh, negotiations. The true value of these mountains, so I know much of Kashmir does have precious resources, is in their beauty. The tourism yeah. and the innate value that they have for those regions. And as such, uh, China is also looking for more open border situation with India, which could result in uh, 
us enjoying them together. But that's something I'm happy to wait for another time to discuss. Mm, yes. Good. In that case, uh, we have a, an agreement then that the current borders will be formalized as the permanent borders of Chinese and India, and all claims on territory not currently owned between each other will be formally uh, dropped here today. And with the signing yes. of this treaty? Good. That is agreeable. That's good to hear. Let's go ahead and get to the second point, which may be a more contentious one between China and India. As you well know, my country suffers from a very extreme water issue, as the rivers and the massive population that we now have, especially in the coastal region, has made it such that we are finding inventive ways to deal with that. There has been a pretty major proposal being made known as the Yolong Sing Pao Diversion Project. Are you aware of that, Prime Minister? Yes, I... I read read about it and my intelligence community has also informed me we understand that that could potentially create a lot of issues between our two countries as well as bangladesh since we are yeah. looking to build a future where we cooperate together we i would like to formally say that the ccp and myself will not approve that project unless we have the explicit permission of the indian and bangladeshi governments mm. that being said i cannot understate how important this project could be to china as you well know, it will be very difficult for us moving forward without the proper water resources as we build a more uh, coastal and rural industrialized society to really progress forward. You understand that these water shortages are absolutely uh, pivotal for us to be able to overcome. Mm. But you must also understand that, that uh, both to Bangladeshi civilization also, India has been built around these rivers. For, for millennia and that these plants, however grandiose they may be, would, would, would greatly I would say, destabilize the region and would plummet our ability for food production, uh, both rice and uh, other, other agricultural goods, in addition to, to uh, of course, drinking water and uh, other, other uses for, for water. So, we would say that... that uh, we have one offer before we, we, we go anywhere that would perhaps be agreeable to India and Bangladesh. Yes. We would propose the building of the dam, as we have suggested. However, we would make the dam jointly owned by the CCP, India, and the Bangladeshi governments. And as such, uh, any decisions made to like allow water to, of course, continue down the proper paths would be allowed for by this commission. We, we would look for a system where some of the water from the dam could be diverted towards regions of China that severely need it, while allowing for the rivers to obviously continue to flow into Bangladesh and India pr to provide those people with what they've needed. Mm. Would so there would, there would be a, a joint joint venture. Of some Indeed, sort. it would cause less water for India and China, but it will allow both to be able to benefit from the system. Mm. If we would be, be able to ensure continual ownership, of course, that, that would be uh, that would be agreeable. Uh, dams as, as well, of course, produce electricity, uh, which which of course would be agreeable for for that, those regions, uh, ensuring a more stable. Uh, China climate. would also be willing to compensate with you with some of the domestic oil production we have in China, which, as you know, does not cover all of our needs, mm -hmm. but we would be willing to explicitly export any energy concerns you might have arising from the diversion of water to other regions of China. Yes, yes. Um, where on the river would this dam be located? Sorry? Where... where, where uh... Where on the river would, would this... It would be in the uh, Yarlung Seng Pao Grand Canyon. Mm. It's a perfect place for such a thing to be built, and it would allow diversion to Chinese regions as well as the continued flow of water down the historical routes of the river. Mm -hmm. If, um, of course, India could uh, ensure uh, that the dam would not be... Say, entirely blocking 
Let me put it this way. If we establish a joint authority over the dam wherein it would be uh, owned mutually by China, India, and Bangladesh, any major water transferals to China's uh, regions would have to be approved by, of course, the Indian and Bangladeshi governments. We would yes. understand with that, of course, that you would be opening to open to do so to a fair degree, as we are in need of it, and would not abuse that position. But broadly speaking, we also do not wish to cause uh, economic, energy-based, and general population damage to uh, mm. our, our friends in India and Bangladesh. Would would there be any ability to move this dam closer to to the Indian border, ensuring, uh, well, of course, ensuring that India could? Uh, Did you have another ensure... location in mind that would provide the specific circumstances that that canyon does in terms of being able to accumulate so much water safely? Uh, perhaps right in the border, I think. It would perhaps be more difficult, but... but uh, Much more I difficult. I still believe that... Uh, yes. As, as diverting water to other researchers of China there would be almost impossible. Out of role play. We're getting detailed. Let me look on the map real quick. I'm trying to ensure that that I am, yeah. China would not be able to to change its heart at a late later stage and uh, stop all uh, war. I understand, but geographically we get into some issues here. So I'm trying to find a realistic way. <laughs> One second. Now, if we really want to get detailed here, I think we should uh, we should go ahead and sit down for around eight hours and plan out how this would be designed and uh, which which routes we would use to divert this water. Um, switch right. Okay, uh, so it's it's right above Bhutan is yeah. where it is on the map, which uh, would be right around like just to the south of Lhasa there. Yeah. So obviously that's a ways from the Indian border, but we want the ability to obviously uh, not have geography fight us. Uh, we would then propose the central region uh, of the of the border on your province of uh, or my province of uh, Zizang just to the north of Arunachal Pradesh. It's very close to the Indian border, but we would have the ability to geographically to divert water more to the east from there. So it would not be exactly on the border where you want, but it would also not be as far away as the canyon. Hmm. Um... And since I believe there is already, looking at the map, a road there that goes and could easily uh, be expanded to go into India, we'd allow for a, a quick and easy movement to and from the dam. By Indian forces. Mm. Yes. Uh, let me see. I I think that um, we could have some sort of uh, international body of let's see. Uh, uh, say uh, an arbitration institute uh, ensuring that that if India would or if China would would uh, stop the water from coming down at any a large litigation would be possible perhaps within say an arbitration institute uh, in addition to uh, the world trade organization i i was just uh, about to suggest the wto so we would be completely agreeable to that yes yes so say perhaps uh, the stockholm uh, arbitration court or um perhaps perhaps one in the western world uh, with a high reputation in addition to why does it need to be in the western trade. world we we are attempting to define ourselves as economic powers i know china is i believe you are doing the same prime minister yes why is it that we must rely on the western systems i agree that legitimacy is important and china is not using yes. this as a circumstance where we can get around things but rather i would like to propose we establish a an independent body here within asia perhaps a third party one who uh mm. is open to cooperation with both of us and would be willing to work with the wto and u.n of course what the Republic of India wishes primarily in this in this situation is to ensure that China could not uh, use its veto power to uh, say. Let me make a proposal uh, then, which I think you would find agreeable. As part of this treaty is to rebuild a modern system of foreign policy from China and India, where we do not define the territorial issues of the past as being relevant. I would propose the formation of an economic council to resolve water disputes in all of Asia underneath uh, the Taiwanese government. Oh, the Taiwanese. Uh, that's quite radical. As you know, we have instituted a two-China policy. Yes, yes. 
I, as a part of this, would 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 you have, if if I if you may uh, apologize for saying so, but the so-called Republic of China lays claims to quite large parts of, of uh, the Republic of India. Uh, as a part of this, would they uh, relinquish their claims? I have no um, doubt that such a thing could be uh, negotiated, as they have a very reasonable ruling party currently. Yes. Well, um... Perhaps we should, uh, I should get on the phone and try and convince the leader of the Taiwanese government to make a trip up here to the Himalayas. Yes. I suspect we'll be here for several more weeks, so we could always invite him up. Well, it feels like that. Would, would you like me to use my satellite phone? I've got, a, I think, one that'll work out in these, uh, out in these mountains. Yes, yes. Wonderful. Uh, let me, let me I... give him a quick call. Hello? Can you, can you hear me? Are you receiving me? Uh, Yep, I can hear you. I apologize. I may have a bit of a bad connection. This is Chairman Z-Man. I am currently uh, in the Himalayas on the border of uh, India and uh, China. We're currently negotiating a economic and political treaty between our two countries. And uh, for various right. reasons, Taiwan has been brought into the discussions. I know this is a very odd thing to ask, uh, President, but would you be willing to uh, take a flight out to uh, the Jammu Kashmir region on the border here? We can have uh, obviously, transportation found for you to discuss things with Prime Minister Vajpayee and myself. Yes, and you're in the Himalayas, Wonderful. you said. Yes, I would advise uh, if you have some very warm clothing, please bring it. I had to. Uh, I was. I, I had was to ask that. Yes, it's, it's rather it's rather cold knowledge. up here right now. I'll be honest. I am freezing, but good diplomacy is worth it. Hey, well, I will get some uh, clothing and I will take a trip. We're in the Himalayas, is that? Oh, we're we're in a we're in a little border village uh, on on the border of the uh, Axi Shin province and Ladakh. I will have uh, CCP uh, personnel give you all the pertinent details. All right, the coordinates will do, and I will be heading there shortly. Wonderful. Ah, I apologize. Uh, my 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 uh, my satellite phone was working, and I, I did convince him to come up here though. So we will. Yes. Well, we, do we want to take a break for the day and reconvene tomorrow when uh, he he has arrived? Yes. Uh. I, yes. Uh, Wonderful. I, I believe that that would be necessary. I have. I still have some matches to attend to in Delhi. The, these talks have uh, taken quite a bit of time. Oh, I do. I do see. You just actually arrived. Ooh, are, you, right. are you okay knocking this out right now? Um. Like in five minutes, I need to go to the bathroom out of Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> short, short break. Yep, All short right. break. That works. President, uh, welcome, welcome to uh, the Himalayas. It's a beautiful place, as you can see. I believe that uh, Prime cool. Minister Vajpayee had to take a trip back to Delhi for the day. Uh, I was planning a small hike myself with some of uh, the CCP staff. Would you like to join me and have a talk? Uh, maybe a short hike. I'm not the be uh, most fit guy myself. You, you did take uh, altitude Delhi. pills, I hope. I'm sure my staff briefed you on that. Yes, yes, of course. Wonderful. We, we can do a, a short walk and enjoy these fantastic views that we are currently seeing. Mm -hmm. So what is on the uh, discussion for today? Primarily, we are entering into a treaty with India, which will define the current boundaries of India and China as being permanent and giving up uh, all claims. We are also discussing uh, economic investments, which we haven't gotten to it. I'm sure Taiwan would love to be involved in, as well as the creation of a dam uh, on the uh, river on our mutual border in the east and the creation of a international dam authority, which is why your name came up. We wanted to have an independent party within Asia to uh, have a water uh, resolution council be formed. We want a system in all of Asia as water issues become more and more prominent in the region to have an authority in Asia that can be internationally recognized by the WTO and the UN and be used by Asia for Asian people to resolve these issues. And I propose, as we are now developing better relations with your country, that this authority be based out of Taipei and overseen primarily by the Taiwanese government. I assume you would be open to such a thing. Of course, but what responsibilities will the Taiwanese government have over this? Being an independent actor that does not have, I would say, uh, explicit interest in a lot of the water problems that exist within Asia. As you know, Taiwan is very independent in that regard. So you would be able to, uh, I think many feel, act as a more independent actor, if you understand. Yes, um, I do see that. I do see that uh, this could be a good thing for both countries as we do, do not want to spark any tensions in Asia. Fully agreed. You would be responsible for overseeing uh, all of the general administration of this resolution system. And explicitly in these talks, you would be at the international 
uh, non-involved actor that would arbitrate the creation of this dam, which will be used to divert water to certain regions of China, as well as allow for the maintenance of the historical rivers in Bangladesh and India. Yes, though, how will this dam be created to make sure that no farmers or other people will be damaged immensely by this dam? It will be a it will be a joint dam authority controlled by the Bangladeshi, Indian, and Chinese governments. Uh, it, things water will flow as it has historically whenever China needs water diverted for either uh, humane or generally farming or any other reasons. We would obviously petition the dam authority and discuss it there internally. Is what we've been proposing. All right, that seems very reasonable. Wonderful. And uh, we're, we're willing to accept this. It's good to hear. We will wait then for the prime minister to get back. Of course. I can, I can tell that you, uh, you don't hike too much, much like myself. I'm a little winded, if I'm going to be honest with you. I know we are probably only 200 feet here. I can see the, the lodgings back there. Uh, I think I might need to take a little bit of a break. It's very cold out here. It is. Would you like to go back inside? Yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. See, the secret is to have a scarf. Do you see this fashionable uh, scarf I'm wearing right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just very nice. I've had pictures sent back and uh, they're, they're being put all over the media. I think I look pretty good. But the secret to cold weather is a good scarf. I promise you that. Yes, I think the um, scarf would have been a good idea, though. I didn't bring one of those. I'm not really used to the cold weather. We'll go ahead and go back in here. I, I have a chef. I believe uh, he's making lunch for us while we wait for the, uh, the prime minister. Oh, perfect. I am hungry. But, um, I mean, for the questions, I actually was talking to the Americans, and the Americans, they seem to be, um, having a different opinion. They wanted to, um, have Taiwan rejoin the, um, rejoin some certain, uh, organizations, uh, world organizations. Such as? Uh, the, mainly, like, the trade organization, they want to, uh, have Taiwan be more of an important Asian partner. Which uh, trade well, organization? There are there are so many these days. The, the World Hello. Trade Organization. Oh, oh indeed. You're back. Oh, welcome. Yes, Hello. Uh, we will have thank this you, thank you. Of course. We we had I, I had to go to debates in, in Parliament. I understand. Quite a while. Uh, Wait, we they, just had a lunch. So I apologize, my, my but they, they've been discussing the recent decrease in, in corporate tax rates in India uh, as a result ah. of, of of course bilateral agreements. And uh, well, of course, the, the position is not very happy as of, as of now. Uh, Understandable. Uh, Prime Minister, I just uh, briefed the president of Taiwan on what we've been discussing, and I believe he finds oh, yes. it to be fairly agreeable. Hmm. Indeed. Yes, I do. I do think that um, we can be a neutral partner in this deal. So in that case, what we have so far in this treaty is we will establish the current Indian-Chinese borders as uh, permanent mm. and renounce all claims on it. As part of this. Uh, India did wish for Taiwan, as you also uh, act as a second China, as you know, as part of the two-party system, to renounce your own claims in the Indian Jammu Kashmir region, as as the mainland China will be doing as well. I personally agree. I will go back to our um, assembly and I will bring this up and I will uh, come back to you, India, with the result of this. Very well. But I, I cannot guarantee anything at the moment, of course. I understand. But I, I, I will, I will bring this uh, to attention. Oh. In addition, um, th there are several well-renowned well institutes of uh, arbitration courts and the like. We would like uh, some involvement uh, of renowned such institutes um, that could um, litigate the, any potential water disputes. Uh, in addition to, of course, perhaps as a part of the, this, and this proposed uh, a new body which would would which would uh, be an arbiter in in any water conflicts we, uh, china wishes for asia to become a more relevant and legitimized actor both politically and economically on the international stage if we continue to let the western systems define ourselves we have no hope for becoming what we wish to be which is equal uh, economic partners in a multipolar world although China is happy to have uh, legitimate organizations be heavily involved and assist in the process. We are very resolute in, in asking for an independent entity to be created uh, specifically for Asia. 
Um, as a part of, uh, of um, well, the common proceedings in uh, arbitration courts, there are usually uh, some arbiters from said in institute uh, chosen. In addition to um, that, each party would would uh, come with an equal number of uh, arbiters uh, that the nation itself uh, or the party uh, generally sees as uh, trustworthy uh, in this system we would uh, we would propose that a common body of say uh, renowned uh, arbitration institutes would would be a part of this of this body in addition to of course uh, judges from the different parties. It's um, agreeable to China as long as it is primarily based out of an Asian region, such as what we propose yes, for Taiwan. Yes, we, we agree. We would, of course, have, have our tourists from China, uh, India, um, uh, Taipei, and perhaps Singapore, which we see as a, as a good uh, place of commerce and, uh, and the like. Perhaps also Hong Kong. Um, although, a man ushers in and comes and uh, says something in my ear. <clears throat> um, I, uh, <laughs> excuse me, General Secretary, but, but I, I, I must inform you of the news. There, there appears to have been some sort of, of terrorism attack on the American East Coast. I'm also just receiving uh, reports of this. Uh, gentlemen, for... Let's go ahead and see if we can finish these talks, and then I think we'll probably need to go deal with that. Out of roleplay, we'll do our first UN session, but let's just try and finish these up really quickly. Yes, yes, I, yeah. I agree. Um, so, um, the exact proposals are, are dictated here. There, there is one other thing I wish to number. discuss, which is uh, two things actually. Which is, uh, as you may be aware, the Shanghai Five is a cooperative agreement between China, Russia, and several of the Central Asian countries. China and Russia both expressed an interest in expanding the system into a, a larger economic zone within uh, Central Asia and Asia itself. We would like to, in these talks, not demand anything explicitly in the treaty, but like to make very clear that through this deal, we wish to extend our hand to both Taiwan and India for inclusion in any future negotiations we make with that uh, organization. Completely up to you, but we would like to make it clear that as we build closer cooperation economically and politically with both of your countries, uh, that door is going to be always open to you. Mm, yes. As part of the economic deal, China would also like to suggest mutual investment between China, India, and uh, of course Taiwan if they are interested in any more. Of course, we can do um, mutual investment. Um, I, we we believe that su such such a membership would would have to be um, gone through more um, official channels. Meaning there is no membership. There 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 there, there is no uh, yeah. formal negotiations on the table. It is something that is in early discussions. Nothing more. I see. I'm simply making you aware of that circumstance and that you are welcome to be involved with that. But that is something that will take years to build, not overnight, of course. Of course, of course, of course. Um, China well, would propose, uh, if you're able to afford it, uh, one to two hundred uh, billion in mutual investments between India and China. Uh, yes, that that would be agreeable. Uh, I I could do uh, two hundred billion dollars in well. mutual investment uh, as a sign of of good faith, uh, given recent. Um, 200 uh that's uh let me see here and then is taiwan able to do a uh, hundred for a hundred a hundred for a hundred uh of course though we would like at least some of them those to be the in office sectors that's i am unable to build uh, those 15. so i can build how much civs oh. you want uh very well 15. then it will just be civilians uh okay. we could do 50. oh no 15, I, I can i can yeah. build office complexes i apologize oh, very well then uh, if you may, if you may do, uh, one office sector or no five. Oh, okay. Well, that works too. All right, then I will do those in uh, civilian factors if that works. Wonderful. In that case, gentlemen, okay. uh, I think we have everything here in line for the. Uh, what do we want to call this treaty? Um. What is this? The town Himalayan called? Himalayan Accords, perhaps. The Himalaya Accord. What, is, what is this town called that we are in? 
It's a um, very good question. I believe it's a village. Does, does anyone know what this town is called? I'll get one of my staff on it. Let me go look at maps. <laughs> we'll, we'll find one. <laughs> yeah. Let's go with... The village of uh, Gogra. It's on the border. In the, in the mountains. Are we okay with that? Yes. Yes. All right. The Gogra Accord. The Gogra, Gogra Accord. G O G R A. Yep. Sounds good. Yeah. Very well, gentlemen. Out of role play. Does someone want to write it? Uh, Hasting, are you able to write up the treaty, or that's like a small oh, blurb yeah. about? Uh, cool. That's a long one. <laughs> no, no rush on it. When you have the time. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um. What what what's the village called again? Uh. Taiwan does not have a focus tree, I don't think. Do they? No, no. They I do not, no. That's a they shame they should. They have some special events. Like, they have some special events. They really well defined parties, too, but no. Don't have that. Wonderful. Oh, well, the Treaty of Gogra signed, I believe. I have to uh, take a flight back to Beijing, as the recent events in America are pretty disastrous. I believe it's the same for your governments. Yes, yes. Um, we have close ties. We'll, we'll have America. to. So. Yes, we, we'll have to have more talks with the Americans. Um, we believe that this this recent war on terror will will indeed uh, make America more active part in the global stage. Which agreed. Of course. At a role play, I'm also going to go see talks. if the game controller wants us to start the you and meeting. I Really briefly, uh, Twins, do you want to do a... You're the game controller, so this is your call. Uh, did you want to do a uh, UN meeting after 9-11? Uh, yeah, you could do UN meeting. Cool. All right, well, do we want to grab folks? All right, uh, I, I, I could go. I'll let me go grab them. UN meeting? UN meeting? UN meeting? UN meeting? UN meeting? UN meeting? Also, you're Bangladesh. I did not realize that... You were in the game as Bangladesh. Okay. Um. Yeah. Uh, my you... original plan was Kazakhstan. Wow. Okay. I did not realize that. You should have been in the talks we were just having. I didn't realize that you were Bangladesh was the player. Fuck. Bangladesh. Like, yeah. <laughs> no one ever point, takes so Bangladesh. Like what the? Universe. What the hell? Well, we just negotiated a shit. We'll have to talk to you about that after this UN meeting. We just negotiated a treaty for a, a dam diverting the river that goes into your country. Kind of. Oh, it's complicated. So we'll discuss that after. All right. All right. I feel offended now. Is what it is. Because of the skill of the mod, it doesn't run super well at 5 speed, even on single. It's doable, but it requires a really good PC, and the longer the game goes on, the, the worse it gets. One thing that confuses me is the way that uh, most big uh, game animals, like deer, the same as the moose, is the same as the animal, is the same. Like, in how they run, or how they act, or how do you mean? Just a heads up, game controller will be running these meetings, so that's you, big twins. Outlooks are like general like group policy, uh, Mr. Meow. Politics in the modern world and ideology acts very differently than it did in the past. So the outlooks basically define the groupings that politically people like look at. So there's the Western outlook, the emerging outlook, the non-aligned and then the nationalist outlook. Western outlook is like anything that aligns with like Western systems like Europe and America. Democracy broadly, general, but authoritarianism too. Meeting. We all know how this works. I try to keep it under a minute. All in speech, please. Thank you very much. Let's start here. Oh, if any mod wants to speak, please come to my, hit me up DMs. Uh, then I'll, I'll call you up. This explains it way better. I don't usually promote my shit, but I will promote this one. This explains to you the politics of Millennium Dawn and how the outlooks look, if you if you check that out. Delegates of Australia. Invited. Oh, might. With the recent attacks against the American people, I, uh, the, the Australian government and its people wish to uh, formally send its prayers 
to America. These barbaric attacks will not uh, will not sever the ride or die relationship our nations have together. And uh, if Australia, sorry, if America would do so in accepting this uh, this offer, we'd be willing to uh, help America in any way, shape, or form uh, find justice against these barbaric attacks. Um, I believe that the United Nations should also recognize the fact that uh, this was a terroristic attack from what it seems. And uh, we should be declaring a global effort to fight against this, th these, these barbaric attacks. As uh, if America is at risk of these attacks, all of us are at risk of these attacks. That's all. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else? Right then. Uh, then I can ask the delegates of China. Good. Greetings. First off, China would like to formally send its thoughts to the American people who are currently struggling with an absolutely tragic incident. We are sure that you are capable of dealing with the situation, and China is willing to provide any resources that the United States government feels uh, needed. On a very much more wider topic, we are happy to announce the GOPRA Accord struck between China, India, and Taiwan, negotiated in the Himalayan Mountains, wherein we define permanent borders with India and China and give up all claims on each other, as well as economic cooperation and a joint dam project that will be used to facilitate stability within China and their friends in India. As many of you know, we have announced the two China policy, wherein we formally recognize Taipei and Taiwan as an independent government and seek cooperation with them. China no longer takes its historical approach, wherein we view all other Asian nations as rivals and those that we cannot cooperate with. We are also call upon the nations of Vietnam, Malaysia, the Philippines, and Brunei to discuss the South China Sea situation, as the CCP is willing to renegotiate their broad claims in the region to reach a reasonable understanding. It is a new day for China as we seek to build a system where we are cooperating in a globalized society. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Um, it's got, uh, okay. The Iran recognizes the delegates of the United States. <clears throat> yes, uh, this is actually the president speaking, President uh, George W. Bush. My apologies. Am yes. America has been struck by not only has the two towers been hit, but I myself bad witness to a terrorist attack within Congressional Hall. The, both the White House, sorry, both the attempts were made against the White House and the two towers and the Pentagon as well as the US Capitol building, of which the US Capitol building has been completely destroyed. Many of our Congressional members have died today as well as in the two towers my wit my i myself only survived it due to a secret service man who sadly is in hospital maybe not able to recover i f i we do know who these people are i have been told by the secret service that it is al qaeda and the taliban that reside in afga in afghanistan as of such with the afghan announcing their refusal to hand over Taliban. It, we, US has no other way of dealing with this but to intervene into the Afghan and to arrest and potentially bring Osama bin Laden to justice. I urge all the George of you Bush to USA, this will be interesting. States in its effort to hunt down these terrorists and eradicate them once and for all. For today, we have to rebuild America. That is all I wish to state. Wow, we got a hardliner conservative USA in this that playthrough. That's going to be interesting. Again. That is all. Great. Thank you very much. The UN recognizes the delegates of Ukraine. Ukraine? 
Pretty much, yeah. Super Risk is a good way to put it. What's up, five minutes? I have come here. Uh, it's a very uh, sad time in the world as uh, the U.S. has experienced the uh, attack on not only the trade uh, towers, it, they have also attacked their government outright. Uh, this is unacceptable. Uh, as a conference amongst us, we should all condemn the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and the Afghans that uh, hold them uh, for, uh, what's the word? My English is terrible. Uh, the withhold the terrorists from extradition. And on top of this, Germany does the same within Europe, denying Ukraine equal access to the EU as it has allowed other members. Uh, going forward, I have been working with the French and Russian delegates to work on the uh, Med-1 pipeline that will circumvent Germany to allow the rest of Western Europe to accept <laughs> gas without having to be strangled through Germany. Have a good day, sir. And good luck, and we wish the U.S. the best on uh, rebuilding from this terrible atrocity. Thank you very much. Um... Uh, you are recognized as a delegate of Russia. Uh, thank you, Mr. Secretary. Uh, firm, first, first, I want to send my condolences to the American government for those uh, terrible terror, terrorist attacks in uh, New York. We hope that America will 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 recover fast and that the um that the I can't think of the English word, man. Um, yeah, we th we think we, we hope that that America can fast recover. But <clears throat> I also came to you to speak about the issue with Germany. Germany has recently announced its intention to to form a banking union with uh, Ukraine, should Ukraine join uh, the European Union. And as a response to this, Russia has been announcing that we will curb the gas supply to Germany by 50%. And as long as they do not change course, this sanction will stay in effect if they change course and remove this outlandish idea um we will go back to the pre um <clears throat> sanction levels of gas supply otherwise if germany keeps encroaching on our territorial integrity and on our sphere we will continue to curb the gas supply to germany that is all thank you damn playing hardliner uh, Australia will not be able to bring you back up. You can restrict one, one time. Uh, there's no one else. I will uh, ask the UNSC. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot France. My apologies. Poor France. And Mercy. Uh, we have come to you to bring to the attention that the British government has laid claim to the uh, large oil reserve that has been discovered in the English Channel. Uh, we have uh, discussed the matter with the UK government and we have been strangled out of our oil resources. This is the prime motivation for our oil deal with the Russians. This pipeline will be able to provide France and the French people with a stable and uh, accessible line of oil. Uh, in regards to the American attacks in New York City, we would like to express our condolences and offer any repair and recovery teams to the U.S. Capitol or the New York City metropolitan area. We will... Uh, I believe that is all. Thank you. Fucking Thank you very much. Accent, I man. saw the Prime Minister, uh, uh, the dele delegates of um, UK raising their hand. Do you still want to talk? No? Okay then. Uh, in that case, I'll ask the UNSC to start the meeting. Uh, if you can please, Security Council, go to your respective channels. In that case, the uh, General Assembly here is uh, come to an end. I'd just like to say that this is the first time in any MD game I've ever been a permanent member of the UN Security Council. So this is this is nice. Damn. <laughs> Bangladesh is here? Non-permanent member. Oh, damn. They're rotating. Also Australia. <laughs> Australia member as well, I just want to know. 
You'll have to look that up. Yeah, I, have, have, I officially have no uh, Not currently. Then no, I'll move him out. The US, the US officially doesn't have a, co a Congress. Wonderful. So who who's going to chair this meeting? Um, we're still waiting for f the French and the UK. Indeed. But once they are in here, who is going to chair this meeting? Um, I can do that if you want to. Of course, Mr. Putin. Thank you. Let me just grab the, the others and so on. Really? What the? I think if the fall of Stalin did nothing wrong. I, w I don't suppose you would happen to be a tanky by any by any chance, would you? I was just gonna ask that. I'm curious. Add a comment. Wonderful. Bonjour. Bonjour. I was just waiting for the UK. Of course. Uh, I believe he is uh, not attending this meeting. What? Why not? He's not. Jay, to complete this roleplay, do you uh, have you been eating escargot all day? <laughs> oui. Oui. And baguette. Uh, oui. Croissant, baguette, and uh, uh, escargot. Mm. But then our roleplay, uh, so shall we continue without him then? Is he just like AFK or what's happening? He he, he said that he's gonna run downstairs real quick, and I'll just tell him what we talked about. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right, gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the 2001 General uh, Assembly. If you have any issues, raise them right now. Issue one, of course, is uh, dealing with the war on dealing with the Al Qaeda and uh, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. Of which, due to there being no Congress and that taking time to reform it, US will be declaring a official state of war on Al Qaeda and the Taliban that harbor him. The, the Chinese delegation would like to obviously get their sympathies and full understanding for this affair and why it's being done. Uh, however, we are a little concerned about how the end of that conflict may work. We know that America is angry and they want revenge, which is understandable. But the CCP and the Chinese delegation would just like to uh, voice our hope that that situation uh, can be negotiated by an international body at the conclusion of that war. Yes, if we capture Osama bin Laden, he will be brought to the Hague. I'm will. speaking more of the post-government uh, situation in Afghanistan, which is, of course, very close to the Chinese uh, nation. We, for now, recognize the Northern Alliance leader. We will not be trying to put any, any different leader. We will allow the Afghan Northern Alliance leader to stay afterwards. Very well. We will not be changing any regime in Afghanistan. The US will be entering in Afghanistan simply to dethrone the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, who has refused to hand over Osama bin Laden. China is willing to willing to give uh, some some minor military uh, communication satellite coverage to the North or Northern Afghan Alliance, as well as provide uh, munition shipments if they're open to it as well. Yes, that's that is what fine. While the Russian government uh, understands the anger that America currently goes through, we do not believe that a military intervention into Afghanistan is the right way. Uh, instead, I believe we should just formally uh, support the, the northern Afghan government with weapons, but not intervene. Uh, uh, let's say America should not intervene militarily there. U.S. Even if the USSC vetoes the proposal of US intervene of U of uh, UNSC intervention, the United States will be intervening regardless of what Russia says. Uh, that's quite not... concerning that you just throw a veto. Uh, China, like China, possibly... China would like to express their their worry with such rash words in the United States. We are here to discuss this situation. I understand that you are willing to make unilateral military action here. But we are here to discuss the issue, and I, I think such words only cause problems. 
And we share the, right. we share the opinion of the Chinese delegate here. We understand. We understand that we, none... We must understand that the extent of these attacks in, in especially the U.S. capital uh, have... Can you turn up your microphone, Jay? Uh, yeah. Is this better? A lot, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, you must understand that uh, these the attacks were very, very... I'm going to stop with the accent real quick. <laughs> the, the extent of these attacks were were horrific. They, they destroyed the U.S. Ta capital and they... They uh, destroyed the World Trade Center as well as hit the Pentagon. Um, I think that it is only fair that the United States were to engage in a military action. This is a this is a blatant act of war. Imagine if this were in Moscow or in Beijing. You will hear no complaints from China in in, in the need for something like this to take place. The only concern the Chinese delegation would have, again, as we expressed before, is the post-war state of Afghanistan. And we just want to ensure that that's done in a mature manner, that's not simply rushed, uh, due to the existential nature of this conflict for the United States of America. Yes, we like I've said, I do not plan to do any regime change or any change of leadership in Afghanistan. Um, do we all recognize the Northern Afghan Alliance leader, uh, al Mad Shah Musad? Musarad, I can't pronounce Yes, name. absolutely. We do as well. Then, US will be, will be intervening to to uh, help him restore order and peace back to Afghanistan. Then uh, let's shall vote on this matter. First up is the... What are we explicitly voting on right now? Uh, military intervention into... UN sanctioned military action in Afghanistan from an international military coalition. Yes. Right, right. Are any expectations for the Begavar nations here today being made? Will China have to provide anything with this proposal? No. So it is simply an approval of an American-led uh, action in Afghanistan. Yes. Correct. Very Correct. well. Then, uh, China, you vote? Uh, we are in favor. Uh, France? We're in favor. Um, uh, Bangladesh? Abstain. Uh, America? We, you, we, we unanimously support it and will agree, yes. Uh, Russia abstains. Uh, UK? In okay, then the motion passes. Yes. Uh, second issue uh, Russia brings, wants to bring up is the increasingly uh, aggressiveness of Germany. Germany recently has announced that they will try to form a banking union with Ukraine, which is encroaching our, in our uh, security and international uh, inter, inter our territorial integrity. China has great respect for Russia, but we do question this being brought up in the Security Council, which does deal with more existential, specifically military and political issues. Well, this is more because, of an economic one. Uh, because this could lead into a broader conflict that could um, be have disastrous consequences economically and. Uh, the UN Security Security Council does not have any rights over the independent economic actions of such actors as Germany and Ukraine, though. So what exactly are you expecting for us to debate or conclude or do anything about here? Sanction Germany for such proposal that you want clearly endangers. The UN Security Council and the United Nations to sanction Germany for instituting a banking council with Ukraine. Yes, as it uh, really does uh, encroach on our territorial integrity, as well as, uh, well, threaten world peace, so to say, or peace in Europe, if they go ahead with that move. Germany shows signs of being really aggressive. So mm. we would like to bring up, uh, uh, what is it called? <coughs> economic sanctions. Has any economic sanctions placed on Germany would affect France, we will vote no. Alright. Um, China? China abstains. Fra France to Bangladesh? Abstain. Uh, America? Uh, 
due to the war on terror uh, and well, a Congress, for now the US will abstain from this measure. Russia is in favor, UK? Abstain. Then I believe the motion passes. It would not no. pass. It's a one-one. It one. would not pass, right? No. Yeah, it's one-one. Okay, one, then one, the motion. Uh, then the motion did not pass. Any other issues? No concerns. I have stuff to discuss. Um, the the reserve found in the English Channel. I think that that is a reasonable guess. Are we aware of how many barrels of oil is estimated to be in that reserve? Um, two. 250 billion worth of oil wow. estimated by the BP surveyors, 70% of which is on the British side of the channel and 30% of which is on the French side of the channel. That's now, what a private company says, but our government... Private company is funded by 40%. the government. 40% of these rights, these, this reserve is clearly in French waters. The BP surveyors say no to that. Uh, and and the British even even now. threatened that if we continue to draw, drill on this reserve, that they'll claim 100% of this reserve. We have offered you a fair deal, one that you continue to say no to. I, I would like to interject here very briefly, although we understand that this is a very strategically important uh, thing to discuss. Would it not be better for you and Arbitration Council to oversee this, as opposed to the UN Security Council, which, again, something like this would, although certainly bear bringing up, not really be within our scope in terms of what we deal with here. Of course, of course. Take this matter privately. Very well. So there's no resolution on this then? No. There is no matter to bring to the table. The one last uh, issue that John would like to bring to the UN Security Council for a short discussion is the instability that continues to exist in Africa. Many nations are beginning to invest and involve themselves economically in that region, including China, which is why we see the civil war in Somalia, the ongoing civil war in the Congo, and the conflict obviously linked to it in Angola of the UNITA to be of a very serious concern to us. And we'd like to bring up the possibility of explicit sanctions on some of these groups or uh, something to be done more formally about this issue. Will the, the Russian uh, side has a question, will Sudan be included in those sanctions? Given that there is no present conflict there, we don't see any reason for that. Alright. Then, uh, uh, the voting shall begin. Uh, China? Hold on, let me let me very clarify uh, what exactly it is we are suggesting yeah. here. Yeah, what exactly are we voting? Yeah, yes, uh, sure. China <laughs> calls upon the states of Yubiland and Somalia the rally of for Congolese democracy in the Congo, and then of course the UNITA to all formally uh, be condemned by the Security Council and to receive uh, sanctions, as they are the most aggressive actors in those ongoing conflicts. And China feels it's important the international body project a solidarity in opposition to these extreme wars. So, Yubaland, UNITA, and Somalia? Yubaland, UNITA, and the Rally for Congolese Democracy, which, if you are at all educated on the issue, you will well know is simply a democratic organization being used as a mask for far-right, uh, very extreme rebels within the Congo. Okay. Right, then, uh... uh China? China votes in favor. Uh, France? Abstain. Bangladesh? Abstain. Uh, America? America votes for. Uh, Russia abstains. Uh, UK? In favor. Then the motion passes. Wonderful. In that case, we have uh, nothing else we would like to propose. Right. If any other side has something to propose, propose it now. Otherwise, this meeting is adjourned. Well, gentlemen, the meeting is adjourned. Uh, let's return all to our capitals. Capitals. Wonderful. All right, that was a that was a solid uh, Security Council meeting. So we we did get condemnation for the region. Obviously, as we begin to become more economically involved in Africa, we want to provide ourselves as an example to the world in leading the push for obviously fair arbitration and involvement within those African conflicts. So we're we're kind of setting that stage as China being both the defender for and advocate for uh, Africa and their conflicts in the UN. So, thank you for the follow, Jetstorm and Riley Weiss, Weiss, Weissiber, Weissiber. I'm trying to say that right. Appreciate it. Thank you.
Going IRL uh, Bangladesh, abstain everything. True. They don't want to make waves. All right, let me read the last two focuses I just did. The three representative thoughts. The three represents is the theory that the Communist Party represents as foot forward by Zhang Zemin. This is one of like the big things he proposed. It's one of his legacies. The theory states that the Communist Party must be representative of advanced social productive forces, advanced culture, and the interests of the majority. AKA the party should more represent the people and should shine as an example of their of themselves and push it through example. <coughs> In PLA Business Ventures, in order to make up for defense budget cuts to the country's military, the PLA started acquiring business ventures in the 1970s. However, the government has recently stated uh, to become concerned by this phenomenon. A new directorate to remove the PLA from most sectors of the economy is therefore necessary, but in order to placate the military, we must implement this alongside an increase in the budget. So we just increased the budget for the military, and in exchange, we are going to force them to stop buying uh, private uh, enterprise within China. Okay, the military was involved in our economy, which is a very dangerous thing. So we're, we're pushing them out right now. That's what we're doing. This mod is blame Don. I can give you a link for it if you'd like. Let me, I used to have it. Do I still have uh, that command working? No, Anminar? Hold on. Not that one. That's a good mod, but not that one. Oh, my, give me the proper link for it. One second. Here we go. This this is the one you want, not the other one. They didn't want to make waves, but they'll be under the waves soon. That's harsh. I mean, global warming will kill Bangladesh. That's very true. We will be starting an Aminar game somewhat soon, unironically, uh, but not related to that at all. Okay. Oops, I clicked the wrong button there. That was not good. All right, so we're looking pretty good. We are starting to uh, implement more Western-based policies economically and otherwise. We have finalized the treaty for the diversion, so we'll go for this as soon as we're done with the PLA uh, reforms. After we do that, we'll finish water conservation projects, and then at that point, we're going to have to really decide where we want to go moving forward. I think what we're going to do is rebuild the 100 flower blooming program. You know what's really funny? I had a roleplay last night. I was doing some like last minute research. I've been doing a lot of it on some of the policies and things I wanted to do with this China roleplay. And one of them is I wanted to open up the internet and basically like obviously get China involved in the global community through the internet. And uh, I, I wanted to like name it the 100 flower fucking, uh, re the rebirth for the 100 flowers is what I wanted to call that. And then I literally went to the focus tree and realized it was already fucking called that. The 100 flower campaign was an attempt by Mao Zedong to open up the Chinese country and the CCP to basically uh, people finding problems with it. So the 100 flower uh, campaign in China was a wide campaign through all of China where basically the government said, Hey, uh, what do you think we're doing wrong? What needs to change? Why, why is the CCP struggling? Like what they wanted to open up basically to people talking bad about the CCP. Uh, there was a lot of problems and a lot of people were very vocal about them. It did result in a huge crackdown by the Chinese government and a lot of those people being imprisoned. So it's history is very convoluted, but one of the things I want to do with China in this roleplay is open us up to the internet. We're not going to go with the Great Firewall. We're going to open ourselves entirely up to the West in terms of the internet for reasons I'll get into in a little bit. But I want to name that the 100, uh, Rebirth for the 100 Flowers. I just found it really funny that it was already in the game. Anyway, what happened to the beard? What's up, a roost brood? Uh, I had to shave it. I will be growing it back, though. So, yeah, that's that's what happened to it. Short, short, short story for it. All right, our interest rate is at 1.1, looking really good. We are running a solid government surplus again. We had to raise taxes a little bit, but nothing too crazy. We had to work on corruption, but that's not one of our biggest priorities currently. So we'll just continue to work on opening ourselves up to the global uh, globalization, broadly speaking, both economically and politically. Very pro-American? Yeah, I figured. I figured. Okay. I am going to write out a roleplay statement. What's it called? The 
rebirth of the hundred flowers. China is no longer as politically and culturally disunited as it once was. Through great struggle and purpose, we have defined ourselves as a nation and people that seek cooperation and expansion. China has defined its outlook on a new century, and with it comes dramatic societal upheaval. Once we opened ourselves up to criticism and lacked the unity to thrive through it, the CCP and my administration seeks to once again let the cultural flower that is China loom for all the world to see. As such, I announce a new program that will seek to provide the coastal and eventually rural regions with access to computers modern technology, and the internet. China will become a part of the growing World Wide Web. It's 2001, we'd still use that term, wouldn't we? A long time ago. Through this system, we will keep our culture, but improve it with what we learn from others. Let our entry onto the global stage allow ourselves to show the strength of our people, economy, and culture. The three principles should not be simple words but rather actions cool there was some really cool posters from this back in the day let me see if i can find them 100 flower campaign here we go we'll go with the og ones Okay, so what that, oopsies, uh, is that we're going to be opening ourselves up to the internet. All right, we actually got the Varyag. The Varyag has completed its long journey across half the planet to our great territories. Our naval engineers are quite positive the whole is to be completed to become our very first fleet carrier. The potential to have a real blue water navy can truly not be underestimated, and experiences and carrier building will be priceless. It can also be refurbished to become a luxury casino as originally planned. We're going to turn it into a casino. We're not going to really try and get into uh, enabling the Pacific. Nets and Nation. The internet is not a substantial threat to our authority. In fact, we may even be able to use it to our advantage. Which... Oh, Hello. Um, this is Prime Minister India. Um, I've just had talks with uh, Sheikh Hashina. And um, they've been slightly aggrieved on not being properly uh, a part of the deal. Or the talks... Uh, Especially concerning dams. I had a role play. I didn't realize that he was a player. So, like in the role play, I just assumed that the Bangladeshis were at the conference. So, we could role yeah. play out that they, they didn't feel like their voice was properly heard and renegotiate it. Yeah, we'll 
we should have sure. yeah, we'll do that here yeah in that case uh, the ccp would uh suggest that we have a conference in dhaka to discuss any concerns they may have yes yes shall we uh meet jenna sure <laughs> Greetings. Hello. I am an ambassador from the Chinese government and the CCP here to speak with you. My chairman does apologize for not being here, but as you may have heard, we are about to roll out the second uh, 100 flower campaign in China, which is an absolutely groundbreaking policy choice by the chairman, so he is not able to attend. I do apologize. I am given I full right to negotiate for the Chinese government, though. Can you repeat my outline here? We lost two seconds. We have heard that the Bangladeshi feel as though their voice is not properly heard at the conference. Uh, we agree to this, but we are only... We do not like how we were not involved in these talks in the first place. Out of roleplay, um, I didn't realize that you were a country, so I assumed that the Bangladeshis would have been there because I would have invited them, so... Yeah, yeah, I'm mostly mad at, at Eric here, don't worry. Oh. He know I was here. Um, Fair. <laughs> but yeah, um... And um, the, the, the Indian government has paid a, a ration of 60 billion to compensate us, so I think that we ought to leave, leave uh, that part behind. Does the Bangladeshi but, uh, government have any major issues with the system that we have discussed and plan on implementing for the dam project? At the moment, we are completely fine with this dam project. Pardon my uh, forwardness here, then why was the CCP asked to send in an ambassador to negotiate at this conference? I do not know. Uh, everything I said was that I wanted a compensation from India. I don't know why you were invited here. We were invited here by the Indians. I, I, I thought you would, would be equally grieved by all parties, but well, um, I don't know. I might propose perhaps a mutual investment between India and uh, Bangladesh should also be a part of this, this deal. But that's perhaps not necessary. Um, In that case, do you mind if I return to Beijing? As I said, the 100 Flowers campaign is currently uh, being undergoing right now, which is a very important cultural moment for China. Yes, I understand. So. Um, we'll leave them to it. Ah, uh, hell yeah, what's up, Zoni? Uh, Hamu, I want to see you RP in Japan one day. I think I've uh, ever seen you do that, although I feel like you... I know you have. I have done it. There's a YouTube... Uh, there's a YouTube series I made for role-playing Japan when I went Monarchist Japan, so I've done it. But I didn't Monarchist Japan, and one day I want to do like either a communist, socialist, or democratic Japan playthrough. Because I think that would be a lot of fun. Are your plans to invade Taiwan? No, we made a two-China uh, policy, so we're ac actively cooperating with Taiwan now. I was thinking of a follow, uh... Is it Jester? I thought someone else followed. No, I'm tripping right now. Ignore Hello, me. I? How do you do? Hello, greetings. Welcome uh, to Beijing, Mr. Ambassador. John Howard, we've met before. Ah, Mr. Howard, yes. I would like to uh, just formally thank you for the announcement of the two China policy, and I, I greatly appreciate you respecting the uh, the democratic ways of Taiwan. Of course, we view them now as a, a partner. Would you be? Uh, would the Australian government be allowed to recognize Taiwan as a as an as a sovereign nation without upsetting the Chinese people? Of course, so Taiwan is a fully independent uh, government. There are All two right, Chinas. Thank you. I wanted to ask that first before uh, I did before our government formally recognized. Them, we thank so the Australians for will be willing to confer with us before doing so. But yes, we have fully course, acknowledged. We don't want to have any bad relations with China or any of uh, the Asian nations. Of course. Is that which uh, you came here to speak with us about? Of course, uh, that was all. Uh, is there anything that you would wish to speak to us while we're here with, or? Nothing comes to mind immediately. All right, all right, Mike, you uh, you stay safe now. You as well. We need to do some spinning pol uh, policy changes, but I'm going to wait to do those until we've we've uh, finished our 100 flower rebirth program. I will link you guys it because I find it to be actually really interesting. Where is it? Google it. There 
This was the original one. It caused a lot of problems in China. Does that link work? Yeah, it does. Cool. I wish we could reinstate the Chinese Emperor in Vanilla Hoi 4. I mean, you kind of you kinda can as uh, Pu Yi, you know, but not as China China. I love natural Australian Hoi 4. It's named the Emu Empire. Yeah. What's the, there's, what's the New Zealand one? New Zealand has a funny one, too. All right, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I will be right back. them in
Yeah. Alright, I'm back. The Kiwi Empire? Yeah. Yeah. Kiwi Empire. That's the one. We will agree to the American invasion as we discuss the Security Council. Finish our infrastructure improvements here. We do want to start working a little bit more on the rural regions of China, which historically and culturally tend to get ignored a lot more than the internal regions, creating to a pretty bad wealth gap. One of the big things that Chairman Zeman really wanted to work on, especially during, I'd say, more of the end of his tenure as chairman, was the wealth gap between the coastal areas and the internal regions. So it makes sense that we would want to prioritize that, especially with his outlook on the economic state of China currently. Manchu can reinstate the emperor. Yes, it can. In vanilla hoi four. You can, uh, you can rebuild, like, uh, the kingdom of, or the empire of China, I think, as uh, Puyi. Yeah, that's, that's the only way you can do it in the vanilla version. You can as a warlord, I don't think. I don't think there's a way to do that. Okay. I think it's time. We have a very important talk. Nope, he's busy right now. We'll wait. They were a lot of fun to play. Puyi's a lot of fun. Uh, it's it's pretty tough to get independence from Japan, though, so you have to know what you're doing. You have to understand Hoi pretty well. It, it can be a lot. If you're, if you're a newer player. If you're really experienced, you know what you're doing. It's no problem. We're almost done with this. We're going to go with an open window next, but we'll need to get the military to like us more, and we'll need to get the par, uh, cadres to like us more. Let's see if there's any way we can explicitly do that. I assume so. Maybe a bit difficult. You get events now and then we'll, we'll, we'll add to it, but generally speaking, really the, the only consistent way you can do for this is to do focuses, which it looks we are mostly locked out of. Oh, I guess we're doing rehost or we had a crash. I'd like a realistic Japan playthrough of a slightly old history. That would be fun to do. Japan, if you don't go with like the military, like typical military junta or monarchy route, there's a lot you can do of it that's really fun. All right, what is currently going on? Uh, Wait, guys. Was that a crash? Yeah, yeah. Did you, get, did you get the save? Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. I need to send it to him. I don't know how. Uh, think... you have to go into the save file. In documents. Yeah. Do In are we getting it to Batcher? I can probably just do it really quickly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, so long as I get a save, I don't care who gives it to me. I have it to you. Yeah. One second. It's here. Oh, the, the file the, the, the file is too large. Fucking Discord, man. Yeah, I, I've got a uh, I've got Discord thingy, so I can do it. Okay. I fucking knew it was only gonna be a matter of time before you came to me, Badger. I I knew someone was gonna see that. I <laughs> I was thinking about it, but I needed a role play reason to do it. So my guy, I'm writing the post right now, but we're we're gonna role play that as I had some health ministers go to vacation in Australia, see how great it is, and we're just gonna utopianize. Yep. I was I put it there in the thing, right? I've been I don't know if you've seen it, but like all my rollers have been memes. Did you see where I like announced that K-pop was cringe? No, I did not. Where do you want to be seen? All right, we got a rehost going up right now. This should be semi-short, so we'll see. Gotta love the eternal rehost, the Coma Paradox Gaming. 
One of my favorite nations are the Empire of the Rising Sun. I love going Shogun in Japan. And bottom part, France is fun as well. And uh, you're talking about Vanilla Hoy, right? Bonaparte and Vanilla Hoy is a lot of fun. I mean, it's just war memes, but, you know, that's like all of Vanilla Hoy, to be fair. Yes, Vanilla. Figured. Heck yeah. Also, Ryan, if you're still here. See, you joke about being Zukov in a historical roleplay game. Well, one of the things I'd love us to do in the server sometime with, like, the tiered role players who aren't going to just meme and, like, start wars and shit would be to actually, like, just roleplay out, like, a historical vanilla World War II game and just, like, just roleplay it. Like, historically, but just roleplay it, you know? It'd be fun. Like, actually roleplay World War II. That'd be fun. Properly. Not the usual, you know, meme shit. See if that ID's gone up yet. Yesterday it has. Maybe? No, not yet. Almost there. We're already three hours in? Oh, fuck. We're already three hours in. Shit, only two hours to go. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I love to do like an FDR roleplay and just give speeches. I, I'll just go like a, go watch a bunch of footage. Or doing a stolen roleplay would be a lot of fun too. That could be. Really fun role playing out like the Yalta conference and shit, you know? Yeah. Or I could role play Winston Churchill and just like basically never say anything understandable. I just like, I'd mumble and grunt for five hours straight as the allies collectively have to try and figure out what I'm saying. The US and the, the, the Soviets will have to role play like basically starting like a spy agency just so they can decrypt and decode what the fuck Winston Churchill's always saying. Because it's, it's very hard to tell. I, I could never tell, personally. Yes. Churchill roleplay for the speeches, exactly. Just a, a, a series of, like, grunting and, like, rumbling noises that... If you're British, you'll understand, but no one else will understand. That's the way, that's the way to do it. Alright, where's this idea at? Hmm. Rehost Gaming. God damn, we got a slow one. Someone said a video a while back. Mage, are you still here? I assume not. Mage, if you're still here, send me that China meme video. We'll play that. If anyone's like a China related video while we while we wait, we can do that. So you British, how did that CK3 role play, England roleplay session go? Really good, Zodi. So do you see the the YouTube series I made out of it? I really was happy with how that ended up coming out. It was really good, man. One of the first things FTRD asked his aide when he had to talk to Churchill on the phone was, is he sober? The answer is always no, Winston Churchill. That man is always five glasses of fucking some sort of British intoxicant deep, and he's smoking a cigar. So that's it's always a no. But yeah, Zodi, it, it, it went really well. It was really enjoyable. It's the, it's the one of the latest series I think I put out on YouTube, besides like the Stellaris one. And, uh... Yeah, it, it was it was a good story, it was a good roleplay, it was a good game, and then I'm very, very happy with how those YouTube videos came out. So, yeah. Stolen roleplay will acquire strong Georgian accent. Fuck. Threatened to send all my co-ops to Gulag constantly. Alright, we do have an ID finally. Wonderful. Was it someone Badger uses passwords? Most hosts don't normally use passwords on our server, so that's a little, a little weird. 
Check and roleplay the NKVD. Now that would be pretty fucking fun. That, that would be fun. That would be really, really fun. Look at that. We instantly loaded because we already have the save file. It's, that's cheating, but it's fine. Investigators have found secret documents that are written by the Kuomintang officials in which they demanded that all news agencies have live video of the talks between the ROC and the PRC officials. They are redacted and parsed in the document and some have speculated that Tang Kui's request of new agencies do not report on the election until the election is finished. More investigations have begun into Ting Kui regarding the prosecution of former PFP officials. Ting Kui went into legislative one and demanded that these unlawful investigations stop or Taiwan could face massive political divisions. Oh, Taiwan's having a lot of internal problems right now. That's worrying, considering how closely we're cooperating with them. Those centralized RP sessions seem to make for the best CK3 roleplays. They really do, Zodi. We're going to be organizing in a couple of weeks uh, another Iberia game. We're going to probably make it non-tiered. The admin council is currently discussing how we'll do that in the Discord, but we're, we're going to probably do an Iberian game within a couple of weeks and really just like set it up properly again this time because I wish I'd been able to show up for more sessions of that, so I think we're going to do another, another game of that pretty soon, which, oh man, that'll be a lot of fun. I really enjoyed the last Iberia one when I was role-playing. I think the Amira's Arcosa, which was really, really good. But I agree. It's those concentrated roleplay scenarios that I think really have the the really high quality. You can do a full map like roleplay game, but it requires a lot better role players. Most players need that crutch of being really close to each other to, to kind of to do it really well. Hmm. We've had no contact with the Brazilians all game as well. Now, we, we, we should probably approach them at some point because of the brick system, but in this roleplay, China's going to really pull back from the brick organization and try to incorporate themselves more broadly into the global economic system and not try and basically skirt around that. I will try and bring out the SCO later, probably next session or the third session, and we're going to really go hard into trying building a really economically centralized SCO, but... That kind of means that the BRIC agreement is not really high on our foreign policy, like, importance list, as it was previously, and I suppose to a degree was in real life. So. We just need people to ready up. Ever thought of doing a CK3 roleplay game centered in the area of Russia, Kiev, and Rus and a bit of the steps as part of the start date? Yeah, we've debated a step game. We've de we haven't debated an Eastern Europe game. I'm sure that will come on the on the discussion board for a while. You can always make suggestions in the Discord, by the way. But uh, the step one we've debated. The ones we kind of really want to do right now is an Iberia game, an England game, of which we've done both before, but we want to do more of them because they're really good. An HRE game, an Italy game. 
a Egypt game, a Seljuk game, a Byzantine game, a Scandinavian game, obviously around 867, an Indian game, and then a Steppe game have all been discussed. Okay, we gotta figure out a way to get the military and the party cadres to like us more. Bear with me. I would really prefer not to go down that route. We're going to have to probably just wait for events, I think. Unless we want to turn the SEO into a military organization, which I really don't want to. Yeah, so we, we can't go down the path I want to until we get the military to like us. And there's no way for us to do that. I mean, going with uh, Zhang Xinghong would help a bit, but not a ton. So we're just kind of cut off from this for, frankly, quite a while. We have to just hope that we get lucky with, like, in-game faction events, which they need to add more of. Otherwise, we won't be able to go down this route. So we'll have to wait on that. We've opened the door to the internet, but obviously something like that will take a while to happen. So we'll kind of have to put that, unfortunately, on the back burner. Which means let's go ahead and continue with the Diversion Project. Never centralized Iberia said the height of the Umeids would be what should uh, would be fun. Yeah, that's what I think the next one we're gonna do for sure. France could be a cool game, being that historically the king of France was typically more of a figurehead than an authority figure, and the Sun King centralized power in France. Yes, early days of France was very decentralized. We've discussed doing a hundred year war CK3 game actually, but that'll be probably not for a while. Yarlung Singh Pao Diversion Project. Building a dam in the uh, Yarlong Sing Pao Grand Canyon will provide China with hydroelectric power and help divert water to regions of China where water is scarce. However, such a project could lead to large-scale environmental destruction, displacement of people, and provoke a hostile reaction from India and Bangladesh. We would now have reduced access to water from a diversion project to take place. We obviously have negotiated this with them, so we are doing it with the acceptance and cooperation of Bangladesh and India, so that's fine. When that is completed, we're going to go ahead and do water conservation projects as well. Hello, Watt. Chowman, how are you? Greetings, I am well. How are you uh, doing, President Howard? We're doing great. The Australian people uh, just wish to... We're going to making our rounds to all the uh, nations of the world uh, just to ensure them that uh, nothing harmful is coming out of it. The uh, Australian nation is less than a year away from finishing the specifications and research into making nuclear reactors. And we want to ensure you all, that, uh, especially China and our neighboring nations, that... Uh, we are going to become a nuclear state, but only in terms of power. We do not wish to, we do not wish to form nuclear weapons. However, we do wish to have free, uh, free energy for all of our people. We have free healthcare, and we have the best free healthcare in the world, and the best uh, educa free education in the world as well. 
and we wish to uh, extend it to now energy as well. We believe that those are the rights of our people and with our research risk, uh, resource rich nation and the revenue that we make off of all of our resources, we wish to um, fulfill these rights and pay for it through that instead of taxing our people anymore. And we believe that it will benefit our people by lowering their the cost of living. China is all for sustainable energy solutions and obviously countries being able to sustain their own uh, energy needs. And as such, we are a little worried uh, to, to hear about nuclear technologies being taken by Australia. But assuming that you do maintain what you've said and make it only for power purposes, we don't have a major issue with it. Obviously, China is not for further nuclear proliferation, but as long as it is only energy based, we don't have a problem. Of course. Um, there, yes, of course, there are concerns for the nuclear power industry from many people, uh, especially after the disaster of Chernobyl and Three, three Mile Island, it's called, I believe, in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, the Australian government seeks to write some of the strictest and harshest um, safety regulations for the nuclear. Uh, and I assume that you are already a member of, uh, of, of the various international treaties agreeing to no nuclear weapon stockpiling? Of course. We don't wish to uh, blow up the world, we just wish to have... I would hope not, as uh, we also live in that world. We believe that, uh, we believe that nuclear energy out of currently is the cleanest and uh, most efficient energy with uh, the byproducts only happening every 25 or so years compared to the oil and the coal um, and Australia is, is determined to cut our carbon emissions down to almost nearly zero by 2040 uh, and we wish to try and um, repair the ozone layer that was sadly destroyed uh, well not totally destroyed but partially destroyed due to um, all of our you know all of our uses of uh, and Admiral Goal and add pro cool. Of course, and uh, and in order to do so, we also believe that using nuclear energy does not only benefit our people in terms of free um, free energy, because of the abundance of nuclear reactors we will build. It's going to be a hefty price, but it's the price that we're willing to pay, as we have no debt right now. Um, I believe it will also help the environment out in the long run. Uh, Australia is a beautiful nation, and we don't wish to ruin our deadly wildlife. Uh, we kind of wish to embrace it. It's what makes us Aussies, might. If it ain't us that's going to kill you, it's definitely the snakes or the, or the, or the spiders. So, we, uh, we want to preserve that uh, beauty. Understandable. We fully support your effort, then. All right, Mike. Have a great one. You as well. The best way for Australia to show goodwill would be uh, wanting a nuclear power for energy would be to sign a non-proliferation agreement. I think at some point we're also going to just more broadly push for nuclear deproliferation. The general outlook of our foreign policy is that we're going to use America's like militarism and warmongering, such as in Afghanistan, as basically a political moment as we become more involved in global affairs to show China being more level-headed and more... Less less aggressive of our foreign policy, more more economically based rather than militarily, which the U.S. is. And we're going to kind of be, let example speak for itself. We're not hostile to the U.S., but we're not economically friendly to them. We view them as a rival economically. Behind closed doors, we won't talk about it publicly. But we do view America as being a, a, a major threat to us economically, especially in the Pacific. So we're going to kind of let them hang themselves with their own rope, so to speak, if they're going to do that. Need to do joint development zones at some point. Where is that? There it is. Ah, so I was trying to see. We'll need to do regional influence, and we'll go down that. We're gonna we're gonna negotiate the uh, nine dash line. And then we'll build Asian ties, which will be really big. What is our current aggression at? Minus one. Yeah. We're not going to turn the South China Sea into a, uh, a political and militarily charged region of the planet. Which in real life they do. China claims all of this. Like, can, I can ping in this game, right? It's been so long. Yes, I can. Finally a game I can ping in. China claims all of this.
Like they claim they came all of this. It's 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 fucking ridiculous. They 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 claim so much of it, man. What's up, unbelievable Bob? Thank you for the bits. The yeah, the beard the beard is dead. It will come back. It will it will rise from the the grave one day. But for now, it's 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 gone. They did invade the parcel islands, correct? Which is right here. And then they're building more islands on coral reefs and stuff like that for power projection. And lost the land war against Vietnam. Yeah, but we don't talk about that. That that that's not something we talk about here in China. As open as we now are to the West, we don't talk about that. They could definitely use some more mutual investment right now. I like how you're playing China, man. I kind of wish we could have sent the CIA in and make you uh, the chairman of China right now. Fucking Christ. They built islands that are sinking. Yes. Yes, they absolutely are sinking. But it's not about the practicality. Let's go, man. It's about how good it looks on paper in CCP meetings where they talk about their power projection capabilities in the South China Sea. Come on. That's what matters. Nothing else does. They're, they're stationary carriers built on the coral reefs. It sounds good on paper. All right, I'm going to get more aggressive with some investment here. Primarily, I want to do that with uh, players. So let's let's approach the Bangladeshis. Since we have a bit of a relationship with them. No, they are in a giant meeting right now. I'll wait. I know who we're going to talk to next then. Hello there. Hello. Who is this? President Al Bashir. This is a phone call from uh, the chairman of China, uh, Zhang Zemin. Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Uh, Zhang Zemin. I don't mean to cut you off guard like this out of the blue, but there's been an ongoing conversation within the CCP for several months now regarding our outlook on uh, Africa. As you well know, we view it as a very important economic uh, partner to China. Yes, of course. Given your recent complex internal issues within Sudan, uh, we, we, we thought to approach you as we see the stability of Sudan and the stability of Eastern Africa are being of huge concern to China. I'm going to be very forthright with you here, Mr. Uh, Al-Bashir. We'd like to turn Sudan into a case model for Chinese investment in Africa and the benefits nations receive when they cooperate with China. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, what is that? Uh... What we are explicitly proposing here is an economic deal between Sudan and China. China will give you very large investments. Now, these are investments that we do not expect to be paid back for quite some time. We would provide a very reasonable interest rate. I would allow Sudan to completely rebuild themselves after the internal conflicts that you have been plagued by for quite some time. You know, my good sir, normally I would not accept money from a communist, but... A communist? Today, yes, a communist, but... Uh, I, I, I believe we, we prefer the, the term Maoist, but go on. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm sorry. What, or Marxist. You identify yourself. Mar Ma Maoist, Mar century. or Marxism, either one. Yes. Uh... But these are troubling times for my country. As you know, my grip of power is starting to loosen a little bit. And I need my people to remember who is in charge. And I feel like the Chinese are the most experts in this field of being able to not control their citizens, if you get my drift, but to know what's right for them. Indeed. So, I think that your administration in Khartoum could be very reinforced by outside investment and capital flow. We know that there is much infrastructure in terms of roads, bridges, and uh, governmental buildings and everything else you can think of uh, within Sudan which need to be rebuilt and upgraded. China could provide the resources, the investments, and the oversight as well as the advisement of our, as you know, very considerable resources to ensure that this happens. If we can turn Sudan into a modern economic power through cooperation with China, we see it as being possible for us to use you as an example of, as I said before, the benefits of cooperating with China economically. Well, we would be glad to be a test study to see how far China is willing 
to invest in the African continent and decolonize it, as it must. Um, how many investments are you ready to make? We are willing to do 150 billion of investment into Sudan at this time and reconsider every year uh, potentially more as well. This is obviously in the form of loans, so we would ha have you pay them back one day, but we understand that it will take quite some time. Yeah, we were interested, but I think we will take the offer, but in exchange, uh, to make sure that we pay this, we would uh, like to put one of our oil fields, if you would like, in your hands to for a great, for, um, what do we call it again? Sorry, my collateral. English isn't very good. Yes, as collateral and as a great gesture to both of our countries. As you continue. know, China does uh, definitely value its resource uh, independence and relying on close partners for economic uh, imports specifically with oil and energy producing materials would be very useful so by putting up your oil refineries as collateral and uh, having 150 uh, billion dollar uh, loan obviously this will be done in chinese currency we will use the uh the one mm -hmm. uh we i believe we have a deal then yes of course then we of course we will not use the american dollar that disgusts me well, of course not. It is, it, is, it is a relic of the past. Thank you. Oh, oh that's nice. Well, alright. Well, we are also... While you're here, my good sir, we, we would also like to uh, talk to you about two things, Mr. Sami. Well, I'm, I'll have you on the phone. Of uh, course. Right now, we have uh, problems with the... Um, with being able to exit my country because uh, as you know i am under um investigation from the u.n justice uh, council and also the security council of, of not being able to fly out of my country we would like you to reconsider that offer and um and change your outlook on me on my war crimes i i am afraid mr al bashir that will be entirely up to you however you will find the uh, support of china in the international field in uh, getting to that point however i believe that that is an issue primarily that only you will be able to solve china doesn't have the ability for you to clear your name. You will have to do that through your actions. I hope our investments and the ability to stabilize your economy will assist you in that, but there's only so much that we can do for such a public uh, situation. I do understand. And my uh, second thing I wanted to say was um, that we are, are, are you ready to put on a visa um, between both of our countries, a visa-free zone that some of my workers can come and work into uh, the region of uh, Xinjiang to up the infrastructure. We, we are money. open to it in the future. However, right now we have a program being instituted in China in order to alleviate the wealth gap between the coastal and rural areas where we are importing labor in the coastal cities and special economic zones by giving uh, permits to basically rural workers in China to work those sorts of jobs. So although I'm not opposed to it in the future, right now we want to prioritize a wolf uh, redistribution through those programs to rural China. I'm sure you understand. Yeah, of course. I, I do understand. It's two developing countries that have been colonized. I do understand the struggle. Of course. Of taking back the reins of its economy. It's not an easy thing to do, but it's an important one. Yes, yes very much so. Is there any other things I can assist you with, uh, President Al-Bashir, before we end this phone call? Uh, no, there isn't, but out of RP, bro, I have one mm -hmm. question for you. Yeah. Um, is there a mod in somehow for, like, Hori 4 to be able to send people, like, guns without the, them being at war? There's a couple. Like they don't work really well. That, I believe, is being discussed by the Millennium Dawn team for how to do that in the future, though. Yeah, because in the I game like... you can kind of do that if you click on another country any of their on their diplomacy menu and then on the influence menu you can send military aid but it's very little yeah because i was thinking like rp wise i wanted to like Sa i got saudi arabian guns but at the same time like the war of south sudan or it was so quickly done that nothing could be done like i even i didn't want it to end that quick yeah it's kind of sad because I'm like, yo, I, I don't want to do anything with those guns, but it's just, you know what I mean, to build up some guns or build up some things. Oh, sure. Yeah. But yes. And that'll be all, man. <laughs> no 
Very well. I hope that we can cooperate together and uh, economically prosper. Of course. Of Thank course. you for your time. Thank you for, call for calling me, my good sir. This this uh, this was a great uh, honor. It's a historical day for Sudan Chinese relations. Yes, of course. Uh, who's gonna do the announcement, by the way? Uh, do you want me to do it? You if you wouldn't mind. It? Yeah, I can do it. Thank you. Oh, a very fruitful phone call with the Sudanese. Uh, I don't think they can recover. PRC got so hurt by Pelosi, I don't think that they can re recover. No, but American and Chinese relations have broken down so badly recently, it's just what it is. They may call come crawling back to the West after their housing bubble, like, properly implodes, which is currently doing, but we'll see. I don't think China's do going to do anything. I think they're just blowing smoke up everyone's ass. Yeah, because they're really weak right now and they want to look strong and they're not. I just turned up to the stream. What path are you going down? We are going to be going down a basically Western outlook China with socialistic characteristics. Kind of very complicated politically and economically. What's the Caliph Cena? They're coming in two months. Yeah. Lula looks like he's going to absolutely just stomp Bolsonaro. Our economy is very solid. We're up to 217 factories plus our office complexes. So our total factory counts around 250 factories. We're, we're pretty solid. We're very strong economically. Yeah, Lula isn't Lula pulling like like over ten points ahead of Bolsonaro. Though I know Bolsonaro is starting to basically do what Trump did and pretend like the election isn't going to be real when it is. So hopefully y'all don't have to deal with like discount Trump. I right, the exact same factories as you, and I'm one year ahead. Hell, as China and Millennium Dawn, or what do you mean, Jacob? You know those betting sites for elections where you can pay like 60 cents for a politician? I don't know those betting sites, but that sounds fun. There's one for China to see how quick the CCP will collapse and how many are betting on 45 day one. Jesus. Oh, China and AMD in 2003. The difference is, Jacob, this is a multiplayer game and I've negotiated mutual investment. So that's that's the difference, my man. If you want to really min-max China in William Dawn to get factory builds, you can. I'm not doing that right now. I'm doing a roleplay based one. But yeah, that's the biggest difference. Lawyer saying that elections uh, he won were also fate. Sparse fascists be like, listen, 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 listen. You can't expect a fascist to use his brain. Brains are for the liberals, and liberals should be killed, so. Unacceptable. Permit entrepreneurs in the CPC. As a result of Zhang's three representative thoughts, the foundations of Chinese political thought has been substantially if subtly amended. While Mao's underlying ideology relied on class warfare in favor of the rural peasants against the urban bourgeoisie, primarily farmers, Zhang's pro-business orientation has led him to favor an end to this aspect of Chinese governance. Now Zhang needs to go a step further, allowing entrepreneurs... something I can't read. But anyway, uh, entrepreneurs are going to be more widespreadly common and acceptable, which is good, as we move to a more globalized hybrid capitalist model for our economy. Zheng Xinghong? We don't have him in power. He's in the government right now. Zheng, Zheng Xinghong was very involved with Jean Zemin. They were very, very close. Zheng Xinghong was kind of a bit of a mentor to Zemin, if I remember correctly, too. I educated myself so much in the last uh, months, politically. That's good to hear, Calpsina. I mean, with the election, I understand. Let me find a new playlist. This one's a little too flute-based. Flute, flute based. Here we go. We'll do some traditional Chinese music. I think I'll probably get copyrighted st strike along this video, but I don't really care, to be honest, on this one. Walk Surgery Amora? True. That band is so unbelievably corrupt, it's not even funny. And he's somehow not in jail. That blows my mind. Sergio Moro should be in jail for probably quite a while. What's our stance on Korea? We're going to get to that. No spoilers, Speed. I have something explicitly planned for the Koreas, but we'll do that probably uh, next session. Today, we're covering the economic changes I wanted to do, the beginning of the new 100 flower uh, program, which I wanted to do, the rebuilding of relations with Taiwan and India, which we've succeeded in, and then the establishment for the beginnings of the, uh, building up the SCO. We're really, today we're just laying the groundwork for a lot of things to come in this campaign, so. 
You're going to get China striked by friend. Oh, undoubtedly. If Lula wins, Bolsonaro is going to jail for sure, homie. I fucking hope so. He's done some bad shit, man. He's like Trump, man. They both need to go to jail so the country, like, doesn't die, essentially. Finally, the fucking DOJ is actually investigating Trump. It took them way too long. Invigorate the country through the STE. And the last time the chairman of Zeman's leadership, he put forward a strategy to reinvigorate the country by STE, meaning science, technology, and education. His plan will allow... There was actually more than that. There were five. I forget what they were. His plan will allow China to make up for their technological disadvantage, which gives us special decisions and gives us a research bonus. We'll start that. Since we are looking to become more of a technocratic CCP rather than a... Hmm, I don't even know what to call the current one. Western Taiwan gameplay. Scoby, you need to, uh, I, uh, I've, people have gotten that issue before. You need to refresh your browser with my stream usually is what fixes that. Since we are going to be re-implementing the STE program, which is science, technology, and education, I'm going to write out a role play post and we are going to fund higher education. So let's go ahead and do that. A scientific future for the CCP. Technology has made itself apparent in its power and influence, both politically and economically in recent years. Chairman Zimin is a man who has always sought reform and progress wherever it can be found. As a part of his reinvigoration of the science-based focus of the CCP's domestic policy in line with the rural coastal uh, wealth redistribution campaign we will seek to properly educate and provide scientific advancement possibilities to rural China a great new undertaking to build new universities and train the staff to be able to handle a great new wave of scientific thoughts in China must be begun. CCP announces a dramatic spending increase to education and developing new uh, universities and research. Cool. That worked. I'll read those in just a moment. do Charles approach and just spam a bunch of good images. Fuck, that's a WebP file. Ah, uh, well. 
There's one to fifth file. Alright, what did I miss? Are you planning on building up your navy to compete with the Americans? No, we're going to compete with them economically and scientifically only. I uh, really want to join, and I'm a mayor rank on your server, and I feel like my RP is PM quality. I'd love it if uh, someone senior server could review my RP in the Asian session see if I'm worthy of it. After every game, staff discusses good role players. A lot of folks are on our list of people we're keeping an eye on. As long as you show up for games and you do good roleplay, you will get it. It just may take a few sessions because we look for like long term, like, you know, quality. I know you are, Jacob, and your your quality is very good. You just need to keep playing games and, and doing good quality and you'll be there easily. You know what pisses me off? Americans complaining that the European taxes are too high when you tell them that a uh, sub surprise ambulance ride in adds nothing to your tax. Okay, we are going to go ahead and fund education. And then we'll raise taxes to compensate a little bit. Okay. I'm going to start investing in Vietnam because we want to build a relationship with them, even though it's been pretty complicated in the past, to put it lightly. Alright, I played MD China single player. I do nothing and I just collapse. It's kind of an interesting way to do it, though. Just slow decline. All right, I'm going to go to the bathroom, and we come back, we're going to talk to the Americans. We're going to have that lovely conversation. Good day, Mr. Zimmin. This is uh, Vladimir Putin. By the way, I just came in from the stream. He's just um, gone to the toilet. Oh, okay, I see. I come back better then. I'm just going to leave. <laughs> I don't get like, right. taken out.
Meta collapsing in games from stability issues sounds real familiar. Yes, it does. We actually have some stability back right now, finally. We were really low for a while, primarily due to game mechanics, but roleplay-wise, we would probably also be dealing with a lot of issues due to some of the more extreme things that we've been doing reform-wise recently. Going good, Canadian. Going really solid. Nothing massively crazy, but we are going very old history in this game, that's for sure. Yeah, it is slow. Tiered, tiered games, we run at very low speeds on purpose. We don't want the game to just race through or people just like only play the game and they don't roleplay, so. Yeah. It's kind of slow. If you ever want to like see one of these games like in a much quicker way, you can always check out the YouTube videos I make, which are like 30 minutes long. They're, they're always way shorter. Okay, water conservation projects. Water is an essential resource, and we should do our best to conserve what little we have. Our government should initiate projects to reduce water consumption significantly, as well as to improve the quality of our existing water resources. It shall get rid entirely of the rest of our water debuff we have, which is right there. I want to play Canada in one of these games. I must say, I'm not surprised given your name. You're welcome to it. They actually have a really good focus tree. I've never played through it, ever. I should, but yeah. Canada's actually got a pretty solid focus tree. If anything, I love how slow-paced the RPs are. They add depth to the RPs. That, yeah, that's the purpose. <laughs> okay. Well, a good time for us to go through our national spirits as well. Let's do that for a minute, because these are interesting. Multi-ethnic state is a saying, unity in diversity. However, more often than not, large minority groups tend to gravitate towards seeking greater autonomy or outright independence. Peaceful coexistence. Since the founding of the People's Republic, Chinese foreign policy has been guided by the five principles of peaceful coexistence. These principles include mutual respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity, mutual non-aggression, non-interference in the eternal affairs of other states, equality and mutual benefit, and peaceful coexistence. As a result of these principles, China has maintained an anti-interventionist stance while championing Westphalian state sovereignty. The game has the same tempo as the background music. I'd say so, yeah. If you want quick, visceral, exciting, repetitive gameplay, you can go watch Competitive Hearts of Iron. That's that's what you get there. This is very different. Repressive government. While we recognize the impracticality of comparatively shutting, uh, completely cut, shutting off our people from the rest of the world and indoctrinating them in mass, we should still control and moderate what they are exposed to. Our people cannot truly be free in a system where any source of instability can become a threat to their security due to an overly lax approach to political speech. Socialist market economy. No description. It's just pretty clear what that is, I think. I want to join some comp point for it, but they're past my level. Yeah, if you can find a good place for it, definitely do it. The problem, the reason I don't play comp anymore is because it's so fucking toxic, but if it's worth it, do it. Members of the more pro-business, pro-development faction of Chinese politics hold the reins of power. This helps growth and development by making it more difficult to win support amongst the rural poor and to fight corruption. Sounds good. Uh, party before country. The People's Liberation Army's foremost loyalty is to the Communist Party of China. This loyalty is ensured with rigorous ideological training and political cadres, having senior positions in the armed forces. Chabaduo. Or close enough is the unique Chinese art of cutting corners in order to get rich fast. By hook or crook. This is influenced by the importance of money in the traditional culture, coupled with traumatic experience in Mao's times, such as the Great Leap Forward. This society obsessed with building wealth and flaunting these riches to others have created many social and environmental problems, but also ensures that people work hard to improve their position in life. One child policy. That one, I think everyone knows. Private member of the U.S. Security Council. Flocking international investments. After the Asian financial crisis, investors chose to divert their investments to other markets, and chiefly to ours. The three represents, which we covered earlier when we took it, the decline of the PLA business ventures, water shortages, of course, and reinvigorations to the ST. In terms of great power status, we are actually getting a lot closer to superpower than we were before, which is really nice. Anything that's competitive in gaming is at least somewhat toxic. Uh, what did you think about, uh, Kazakhstan went green in MD Asia? What's up, Alex? You mean when you incorporated into the Soviet Union, or what do you mean? Because I remember that. 
Yeah, it's a shame. I like playing like competitive games. I just can't stand the culture in competitive games and competitive communities. It's just so, you know, it sucks, man. I, I really like League of Legends for a long time. I played a lot of League of Legends for, for my childhood up until now, but like I will get into League for a little bit. I will just get so fucking tired of the toxicity of people and then I just stop playing it again. It was the same with like Hoi competitive for me. I even looked a little bit into like EU4 competitive because I found it to be kind of interesting, but I saw the same thing there as well. Just, just toxic people, man. Toxic people. You did the Civil War and died? You went Salafist Turkmenistan. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a real shame though. Because objectively, I do I do exclusively role play with streaming and like videos now, and and like I kind of do wish I could play more comp because I played comp games which I really enjoyed, especially of Hoy. There were a few non toxic comp games that I was in once that were really enjoyable. Now it, it does get the issue that it's repetitious and that like it's mostly the same thing over and over again, but like that's fine. I would love to be able to play a comp game like every couple weeks or something, but there's no place I have found where there is a non toxic community, so. That's what it is. I think Hearthstone is one of the few games your competitive scene is pretty chill. Really, Mage? I played Hearthstone, like, for maybe a couple hours once, but that was it. So I don't know much about it. I know it's a really big game, like, community-wise, though. Kind of surprising. It is a Blizzard game. They tend to be... Well... They're more complicated, but they tend to be a little less toxic in some ways. It is very powerful. I mean, to be fair, Tajit, they're also very powerful in real life, so it, it correlates. Hope you're doing well. We are going to crack down on the weaker stuff. That's one historical thing we will be doing. You're doing the Uyghur thing zero zero. Hope is terms of service. Oh fuck. Yeah, we'll find out, I guess. The good thing about the super toxic comp games is that when everyone is so toxic to each other, they eventually burn themselves out and you don't see them anymore. But somehow there's still so many comp communities out there, which I don't understand. Hearthstone's pretty nice overall. It, it does seem like a fun game. I just always struggle to be interested in card games like that. I, I always found them to be, I don't know, just not really engaging enough for me but then again i like only play grand strategy games so i kind of have my my niche it's what i always enjoyed all right we gotta go talk with the americans let's go do that he's gonna talk with someone else as usual fuck we'll, we'll wait a little bit there's someone else we could talk to though Greetings! Hello. President Sarah, did I catch you at a good time? Ah, uh, yes you did. Wonderful. I just wanted to give you a phone call as I felt like what is needed. I know that our governments obviously communicate quite a, a lot, especially due to the fact that we are in the, the BRIC economic grouping. But I thought it was high time that me and you have a, a personal talk given the many changes that China's gone through as well as the world as a whole. Yes. We've been uh, really focusing inwards after the Asian crisis caused our economy to crash. And we have been working diligently at restoring balance and prosperity to Brazil. Understandable. Many of the BRIC nations were, were hit quite badly by the Asian financial crisis. Russia, especially, has really, I know, been struggling to recover. And we're doing what we can to help uh, in that. China, as you know, in many ways, uh, actually benefited from the Asian financial crisis. The very good decision to not devalue our currency, along with the massive capital flow that we've received from the West has allowed us to really dramatically uh, bolster our economy, which I think the economic numbers speak for themselves. I'm not saying this as a boast, but rather to 
I suppose, underlying the, the, the many economic changes that we've implemented in our foreign policy, as well as to offer a hand to Brazil. The BRIC agreement is one that we do still hold in, in fair importance, and our personal relationship with Brazil is very important, as we're both developing nations, formerly uh, colonies, in, in some level. And we would like to formally offer uh, any aid that you might need economically with recovering from the recent economic downturn. Of course. Uh, what are you looking at uh, investment-wise? Is there a set number or...? What we would uh, be willing to offer you is up to 200 billion in investments to Brazil. Uh, this would be based on an interest rate attached to inflation uh, on, on the yuan specifically and would be uh, paid back whenever Brazil has the ability to do so. Optimally in terms of investments back into China, but it could be done in any way that your country would like. No timeline on them. Reasonable, uh, obviously, circumstances for it. Hold on one moment. I just have to figure out uh, where the current foreign uh, projects are going on in Brazil. Okay, if you are able to invest in... In Piranha, which is uh, towards the south, if you can invest uh, into the southern provinces down there. How much are you explicitly looking for and would you like that in civs or office complexes? Uh, if we can do civilian infrastructure, uh, civilian buildings, uh, investments. And how much so total are you looking for? Like I said, we can do up to 200 uh, billion for you. We can match that and we can do hand in hand if you want. If you're capable currently of doing so, that would be reasonable and we'd have no need for a loan then. Yeah, no, we can do that. Wonderful. In that case, we'll go ahead and send the offer there for the investment in the south. As for China, we are looking to uh, to finish the industrialization of the coastal regions. So if you could do in uh, Fujian in the south, the uh, coastal region, and then uh, Zhejiang as well. And what was the other province? Uh, Zhejiang. Did you get that one? Uh, yeah, where is, I'm trying to figure out which where that just on the southern coastline just to the north of Taiwan to the south of Shanghai do you see it by oh, you talk, oh, okay so I invested in Fujian and then what was the other one? that's why I make sure we're talking about the same one that's Fujian, and then just to the north of that, the, the province just up the coastline there. Zhejiang? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Perfect. There we go, and that should be matched. That was 200 billion you did, correct? Yeah. Wonderful. In that case, uh, we are happy that you are able to do mutual investment. We did not realize you were in good enough economic shape to do so, but... Our former president, uh, Cardoso, did a very good job at restructuring our economy. Uh, we were quite impressed. That's why our party won our re-election. I do see that the uh, Social Democracy Party is still in control. Congratulations on that. Frankly, we've heard very little from you. And given the very dramatic events happening in Europe and the focus on China of developing treaties with Taiwan and India, we've been a little bit preoccupied. I'm sure you understand. Yeah, so uh, Cardoso, we've been so focused inwards trying to rebuild our economy after the crash and the debasing of our money to where it was only we, people were writing and drawing with uh we decided to correct our currency and we really stepped out on the international community by solving the issue between france and the united kingdom it's good to hear i know that was a very contentious one but we weren't very involved with that oh okay i think everything is all good i think so as yeah, well uh, brought, we can, brought... uh continue strong relations between our nations China does feel it's very important. Uh, we are looking to cooperate with all Western countries from here on out, and we hope that we can have a very close relationship with Brazil, assuming we don't step on each other's toes in terms of economic focuses, of course. Of course not. 
Wonderful. Thank you for your time, President Sarah. We will speak soon. Oh, man. We just got an event link to us. Bozy Lie. Bozy Lie is really interesting, Jacob. That man is very interesting. So I must ask you, did anything happen in Tiananmen Square in the 80s? Do I want social credit points when I already had negative 2 million? No. What is it, like 10,000 people were killed? Good day, Mr. Zimin. I come with concerning news from uh, Australia. What exactly is happening there? Uh, I have spoken with uh, Mr. President Howard in Australia, and uh, he rather proudly told me about his nuclear program. And I asked uh, on my on my question if that involves nuclear weapons. He said he will develop them if he feels the need to. And we find, as Russia, we find that very concerning. He explicitly made promises to my government that he would, under no circumstance, ever develop nuclear warheads. He did that. He did the said. He said the opposite to me. He said, like, if he feels the need to, he will develop them. I think a conversation with uh, Australia is definitely warranted. Then. Yes. I would propose uh, then so we we send uh, diplomats together representing the Shanghai Five. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Let's go ahead and do so then. We can yeah. form a united front then on that capacity. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's especially needed. Out of do we go to his channel then? Sure. <laughs> uh, I need to find him. Okay, here he is. The fucking Russian. What do you want, mate? I already told you. You ain't gonna stick your dick in my policy in, in our country's policies. We're going nuclear with our power. Greetings, no President Howard. I am ambassador from the Chinese government alongside my ah, counterpart in China. Russia. We are representing the Shanghai Five. Nice to meet you. What can I do? Uh, what can I do you for? Uh, the CCP has heard disturbing rumors from our counterparts in Russia that there have been claims oh, made by. The, you mean the lying if dog. you would allow me to uh, finish what I'm saying, I would appreciate it, President Howard. Uh, we we heard complaints from the Russians that supposedly you had been making claims that if you feel the need to, you will. Uh, use your nuclear resources to develop uh, weapons of mass destruction. Is this the case? No, that's not the case at all. We are making nu we are making nuclear power, and that is it. However, yes, I did tell him that if at ever time in the future that we are threatened with nuclear war by someone, then you know, of course, we are going to rely on our allies and our own nuclear capabilities to uh, defend ourselves. That is quite concerning to us because that is not concerning at all. That is 100% every right that I have. This is our nation. You are Russia. You are not Australia. You are not an Australian citizen. No, no, no. You're in my country. All right. You're in my country, Mr. Putin. No, Mr. Putin. President Howard, do you do you do you, do you really do you really think that being so combative with the Shanghai Five is the right decision, considering? No, I am not combative with you, China. I'm combative with Russia. Well, you're here representing the Shanghai Five jointly, not just China or Russia. You are speaking with an intergovernmental organization primarily currently. Yeah, I, I I respect China, but I will not respect Putin. I'm sorry, I cannot respect him anymore. He came to my nation, and uh, when we told him that, when he asked us if he can invest in our nation, I told him no, Sally can't, because we are right now focusing on our nuclear program. He got all upset and said that we were trying to make nuclear weapons, when that is not the case at all. Every nation in the world is, has been able to develop nuclear reactors for power. Spain has, Germany has, France has, the United Kingdom has, Italy has, all these nations have. Why is it that when Australia, us Aussies... I do apologize, gentlemen, but there's a developing situation in Taipei currently, and I'm going to have to go uh, deal with that as it is incredibly pressing. What's that? Uh, uh, ambassador, Russian ambassador, I, I fully uh, I hope that you can work this out with the Australians. I, I will be I back shortly. I don't think there's nothing else to... Uh, I don't... Let me read out the event that just happened so you guys can see this. The Taipei massacre occurred recently during the Taipei protests where people demanded answers to the suspicious 2000 elections and the potential political persecutions of several PFP members. Protesters began marching towards the Legislative One, where they would stay until the demands were met. Tang Kui uh, ordered the police to stop the protesters before they could get close to the building, citing security risks. Police were told to not let protesters get in close to the Legislative Yuan, and the police of the chaos were very unorganized. 
Several officers began firing on protesters in potential confusion, as they could have been following orders from a higher person in government. The massacre was caught on camera. Several police officers expect experts have dubbed this as a Taiwanese version of Tiananmen Square. Oh boy. Uh, though admittedly, it was less deadly. It is not known whether Tang Wei ordered the shots to be fired or if it was a mistake. We has refused to order any investigations into the matter, which has raised many flags. The Election Security Act is expected to pass, which will force Tang Hui to release all information he knows about the suspicious circumstances of the election and the political persecution of members. Well, that is, um, very worrying. We're going to have to go talk with them. Eighty-four billion, um, in investment is a lot of money. Oh, but I'm not sure how we can do this. We might have to reconvene because someone who I think I need to talk to very much right now regarding the um, political situation in Taiwan. Ah, uh, yes. Hello, Mr. Zamin. This is this is a phone call. You just got you have a little like red beeper going off on your desk for an yeah. important phone I, call. I don't know if a phone call is exactly advice. My phone sometimes are being tapped, and it could be hearing in the side. Suggest that we have a secret meeting. I feel, given the present circumstance, secret is probably not the best idea, President. Well, I feel I'll, I fear that anything I could say will be used against me. Would you like for me to leave, good sirs? Um, I think it is for the best right now. There's a lot of sensitive information may be spoken. My proposal to you, President Hui, in order to deal with this uh, situation, is you formally invite me as Chairman of China to take a flight to Taipei. There we should have a conversation about the this issue and further collaboration, uh, perhaps within the one legislature, and open it up to the people of your country. I fear that they may feel a bit of betrayal here because of the um, suspicious circumstances. I don't want to go too much into detail on the phone of course my phone could be tapped if you want the full story uh take a secret plane over to taiwan and i can give you the full story about what happened in the elections let's uh, go ahead and uh time. let's go ahead and meet on a more safer ground then let's meet on the strait between uh kinmen and the mainland china very well i will do that in secret all right i'll take a flight there myself all right uh Oh, hold on. Let me let me do some ocean sound effects. We're meeting. Right, we're right. gonna meet on the ocean. I want to do the ambiance. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, you you've asked me to a very secret meeting here. I think this is a very beautiful place for a talk, but also it's an important one, so let's get this underway. What is it that you could not tell me over the phone? It is about the elections. The elections were not fair. We did indeed rig the elections in our favor. We had media, the media not report on any sort of uh, election thing. We had, during our talk that we had during the elections, we had that as the main primary focus. Well, we could um, have some of our uh, people kind of rigged the election so far and it appears that the um some pfp members the people's first party uh they kind of took notice of this and these two members they decided to go a bit more against me and as a way of dealing with them we uh made some fake allegations towards them and um i believe i was a bit too obvious in my persecution of them as uh, many people took notice of this and I'm not sure how to say this, but I believe um, it's not looking too good. The polls have shown a massive decrease in support of our party towards more liberalism. Conservatism is dying at a very fast rate. We only have 23% of the, the vote, while the uh, Democratic Progressive Party, which is the more liberal wing of the... Um, of the CCP the, uh, does Taiwan. not wish to see them in power at all. Well, they have around double our support at the moment. Um, maybe we could have some Chinese spies run some disinformation campaigns though i do be want to get out of the drama i have had too much drama i i have a proposal for you yes as i expressed to you previously china is wishing to renegotiate the south china sea which i know is a very hot topic within taiwan yes mm -hmm, of course uh my proposal as i know you are going very tired of politics is frankly 
President Hui, that you step down and take full responsibility for this situation. By doing so, you allow your successor for the Kuomintang to take power and to launch an investigation against you. Although, it would be done in such a manner that would dictate that anything done to you would be very minor. In worst case scenario, China could potentially negotiate political asylum. What we then do is allow your successor to be the negotiating head for a conference to dictate a new South China Sea system. As I've expressed before, China wants to do mutual, uh, obviously, cooperation with Taiwan in the South China Sea. Although I don't believe that's really publicly known at this point. If your successor was placed in power, and before the upcoming election in a year, uh, was the one to heavily negotiate the South China Sea. If anything, uh, China could make a very, a bit more of a hardliner stance to start with, uh, then we actually plan on doing and allow your successor to basically at least appear to negotiate China down to a more reasonable uh, negotiation where in Taiwan would get a lot more than they probably would have expected. Hopefully this would be able to rebrand your party since you are the ones that the CCP wishes to cooperate with. We would be willing to, to do a lot here to exacerbate you getting uh, in more power. In addition, if the Kuomintang could negotiate more investments, that could do a lot to uh, help you secure the next election, I think. I do agree about the investment parts. I am so worried. I don't think we can, I don't know how we can repair the damage that's already been done in a year and a half. The DPP is very, um, very popular right, uh, right now. And we're not quite sure how we could counter this. Um, if the Kuomintang but... and your successor was to single-handedly negotiate the South China Sea crisis, resolve it and get Taiwan broad territorial water authority, I think that would do a lot. Enough? That is impossible to say. It's 20, they have around 20% over. And liberalism is rising a lot in, in Taiwan. Um, conservatism has been dying ever since uh, the allegations. The uh, PFP is um, a party that used to be very popular, almost won the previous election and is now- Of course, but there. the ruling party doesn't have complete power. Even if the Kuomintang is pushed out, you still have your seats in the legislature, correct? Of course though, they might not be much. No, but you can do enough to affect policy in Taiwan. Yes, I, I hope that's, I think, probably our best case scenario we should really realistically go for. If, if we cannot let the DPP get a super majority in the legislative beyond. I agree, so we need to do damage control here as far as I see it, President Wee. So you're suggesting I should step down? I suggest that you step down and you allow your successor in the Kuomintang to negotiate uh, an investigation into you, which will obviously be dragged out until the election then deemed inconclusive. And then your successor explicitly calls upon us, China, to negotiate the South China Sea issue and takes the lead on that. I am worried about a power struggle in the Kuomintang. There's not really a second command, really. President Wee, do you have no one that you can give your full trust to? You need to choose someone for the future. This is when your party will either thrive with cooperation with China or die. Yes, I, I agree. I'm, I need. I think. I thank you for the advice. I, I'm not really meant good good st uh, stress situations um but yes, this is the recommendation of myself as chairman and the ccp i think you are right about this um maybe we should do some economic uh investments at the moment just to you know, i, I try to would be willing to offer but we frankly we would like to see you step down first and do it for your successor and any good news we give to you will be lost if you step down very well uh i'll do it give me a month or so so I can get a good successor and we will... Wonderful. Successful we'll reconvene then. Uh, contact my office as soon as you plan to step down. And uh, I'm happy to work with your successor, whoever they may be. I hope you'll make Very the proper well. introductions. All right. I'll see you later. You as well. Bye. We'll probably end up... He is going to go to the other party, I think, which is totally fine. But we're going to roleplay this out in an interesting manner. So, all right. Let's see if there's still a talk with the Australians going on. There is not. But the Americans are currently not busy. I want to wait until we figure out things with the Taiwanese first, though. Then we'll go talk to the Americans. Our meeting on the coastal area there is done, so we'll turn off the ambiance music. We can do another anti-DDP uh, media campaign as well. We'll go ahead and do that. If we get caught doing this, this will cause some problems, but... They have a lot of support right now. The People's First Party has really broken the vote with the Kuomintang faction. 
But yeah, Vietnam though? Ryan, have you played any of our games? Do you know how our tiered system works now? We have like a system for these games and for like getting like role play ranks and playing in certain games. Have you have you ever played one of our server games, Ryan? I try to think. If you did, it probably would have been quite a while ago. Now I've always been busy. Yeah, it's fair. You you have a lot going in your life, man. I fully understand that. I caught Taiwan with Moose for one session, but MD's too confusing for you. That's fair. Punch your local national socialist. Top fucking tier name, my man. What's up? Hope you're doing well. For a tier game, at least. That's fair. MD does take some adjusting crack cheeses. I think you'd really enjoy it, man. You would enjoy it if you got into it, but it, it can be a little intimidating when you first start. That's for sure. MD generally is pretty intimidating, honestly. I know I was when I first started playing it. Yeah, that, that is an absolutely top tier name. That is absolutely top tier. Is a foot mod to play especially with the rp aspects to make up for the focus trees that are lacking like vietnam that has the default yeah the focus trees are like the the thing that really need to be done but they're also really hard to do and the quality is something that md doesn't really allow to go down so that's a lot i know that feel md runs so slowly on my laptop yeah it does uh yeah, I used to play on a laptop before I upgraded to this PC. I only tried to play, I think, MD on it once or twice, and both times it was just, it was not happening. My PC was just, my laptop was fighting me every step of the way. It was ridiculous. Also, I did redeem a renamed ship and army. Can I still do that? Yes, Jacob. What would you like to be renamed, and what do you want it renamed to? I'm just waiting until, I, uh, until Taiwan gets back to us and we try and resolve that issue. And then we'll talk to the Americans. We only have 30 hours left in this... 30 minutes left in this game. 30 hours. Fucking hell. 30 hours straight MD roleplay win. Bozy lied, did nothing wrong? That's a complicated statement, but generally he was, uh... He was perpetrated in a fucking political cleansing. Yeah, Bozy lied's a really complicated person, but... He didn't deserve what happened to him. But dictator Xi Jinping doesn't need rivals. So 24 hour million dollar roleplay win. It looked right up. I'm sick right now, guys. I don't know if you can tell, but I am sick right now. Very, very I would say very sick. I'm sick. Lin Bao vibes. He was a commie. Oh boy. Oh boy. Commie's bad. Damn it, Taiwan. Yeah, he's going to go with the Progressive Party. That'll be interesting. Let me look them up. Democratic Progressive Party of... Democratic Progressive Party Taiwan. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you go, you go and get learned today. We're going we're gonna to learn something together. Taiwanese Nationalist and Center Left Political Party in Taiwan, controlling both the Republic of China's presidency and unicameral legislative. Yuan is the major ruling party in the dominant Pan Green Coalition since 2022, so they're actually in power currently. Wow. Found in 86, a year prior to the end of the martial law, the DPP is one of two parties in Taiwan, and the other being the historically dominant uh, Kuomintang, which previously ruled as a one party state. It has traditionally been associated with a strong advocacy of human rights, emerging against the authoritarian white terror that was initiated by the Kuomintang, which is really bad, as well as the promotion of Taiwanese nationalism and identity. In contrast, to Chinese unification, we could work with them. It would just be probably not 
not as useful as working with a Kubinting. The incumbent president and three-time leader of the DPP, uh, Sei Ying Wan. Oh, win, yeah. She oh, she's from the DPP. Okay. Damn. Liberal International. The, it's affiliated as parties are widely classified as socially liberal and having been founded as a party of human rights, including factions within the party supporting uh, same-sex marriage and LGBTQ rights. And foreign policy, the BPP is more willing to increase military expenditures to defend against a potential invasion to the ambiguous political status of Taiwan and favors closer ties with Japan and the US and Asian. That, that being said, though, they're dealing with a very different China than they did historically. So this will be interesting to see how this will go. We'll see how Moose will play this or will plays this. I was just reading the rule set, very easy to adapt. I'll hopefully be able to get uh, and grab the citizen rate so I can work up the mayor so I can solo on Vietnam. Yeah, for sure, man. Go for it. All right, we're going to do what we promised the uh, Taiwanese. South China Sea. The importance of the South China Sea, both strategically and economically, cannot be overstated. With disputes and tensions of other nations occurring frequently, notably over the vast oil fields and only recently rediscovered in the area, outmaneuvering our rivals and projecting more power in the region is of utmost importance. Our soft power in Southeast Asia is suffering due to our ongoing disputes with Vietnam, Malaysia, and the Philippines. Diplomacy is the best way to secure our diplomatic relations with our regional partners. Establishing joint development zones with other nations in the South China Sea is an effective way of reducing animosity and fostering further cooperation. However, we must reconsider uh, whether we are willing to share the benefits of resource extraction or potential enemies while pursuing these agreements. So we're opening up the door to renegotiating our claims in the South China Sea, which I want the Kuomintang to use as a probably failed means to try and remain in power, but we'll see how this goes down. Otherwise, we'll need to do a, an independent conference on it. Vietnam is a little bit more willing to work with us now due to investments. We're all for them commsats. And we're going to actively improve relations with Vietnam. Same with Malaysia. And same with the Philippines. I confess I haven't read the rule set, but I know the general gist of modern RP since I play them in a game called Rise of Nations. I learn as I go, and I just don't act like a dumb person. That's fair, Jacob, but I do recommend you read the rule set as there are a couple specifics that we do take pretty seriously in there. Hello, Mr. Zamin. Greetings. I uh, come after I have uh, negotiated with the uh, autonomous province of uh, Taipei. I believe ah. that is the politically correct way to say it. Yes. Um, uh, I have uh, wanted to inform you that there will be a grain uh, purchases. They have invested in uh, some semiconductor production in uh, over the Nipur. Uh, as such, we have built uh, the grain storage facilities, <coughs> oil storage, um, into their country, uh, and we would like to offer the same as uh, our growing uh, grain businesses with the help of uh, especially China in uh, the Siberia area. We would like to open uh, some Ukrainian companies with you to, uh, what's the word? receive this grain into China, where China can easily access large amounts of uh, food by a uh, government decree. You're proposing the building up of uh, essentially food warehouses throughout China so we can maintain a very big surplus? Yes. It's not a major priority for our current government, but we wouldn't be opposed to Ukraine doing so if they wish. Splendid. Well, this is to benefit us both, as you would be able to purchase more grain from us uh, with the proper storage. I understand, and uh, the CCP would be open to such a proposal. Would you prefer them to be on the coast or more inland? More inland. The rural areas primarily. That is where we've had issues with uh, food scarcity in the past, so I think we should definitely prioritize uh, there, specifically. I shall build two in the provinces of Sichuan. In Guizhou. And man, I love Sichuan chicken. Do you think I can get a good recipe there? I don't doubt that you can. Splendid, splendid. 
uh, w what is your opinion over the recent uh, drastic increase of hostilities uh, around Asia in between Russia? Russia and Australia, I assume you're referring to? Yes, yes. It seems primarily to be a breakdown of communication and a very unfortunate one. China maintains relations with both countries, close, I like to think, especially with Russia. So it is very concerning and sad to see such a thing happening when we do view it as entirely a communication issue. Yes, I, I, I was there for the wording part of it, and it, I don't disagree with the Australians being able to have nuclear power, but if they are willing to so haphazardly, haphazardly uh, say that we will create weapons is uh, a very scary thought, especially being part of the non-proliferation treaty. Fully agree. China is uh, not a nation that seeks for further nuclear proliferation, and as such, uh, we are very concerned by what's going on there. Yes, yes. Well, I, uh, you seem to have more vit visitors, so I will return to Kiev. You are always welcome to come there if you ever need assistance. Thank you for your Goodbye, time. Sirs. Bonjour. Greetings. I do apologize, but it, it, I believe the Taiwanese are, are back to discuss what we, we just discussed, President. Uh -huh. I do apologize to the French envoy. Would you would you mind if I send an envoy to you very very soon? It's just we're dealing with a, almost a crisis here in the South China Sea. Of course. Okay. Thank you very much. Greetings. Well, greetings. Before we go into this, I've heard of the plans from Hui. He told me. Ah. But I President need some... Chan, I agree. I believe your name was. Uh, Lian Chan in Chan. That's 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 him. But uh, yes. So. He has stepped down, and he's admitted, though he is under criminal investigation for the uh, crimes he did uh, co potentially commit. And we wondered on what to do, because we believe that if the uh, trial goes through, the uh, Kuomintang will probably be exposed of everything he did. Well, he admitted to doing election tampering, etc. He didn't really fully tell the full story, but he did enough to satisfy protesters and people in the legislative line to believe him and they were more delighted with the fact that he resigned we need to, oh i believe we need a way to get him out of the country to prevent uh any like that trial to go forward because our poll numbers have already fallen to, a to, 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 to make to make this very i suppose dramatic we could stage his death but where would he be he would be given a political asylum within beijing we have uh, places for people like this and he cannot be spotted ever again we have the, the, the methods to make it such that he will never be never be known to the outside world again. But live comfortably, of course. I believe he's in house arrest, so we're going to have to do if something. If you would like allow him. for uh, Chinese special forces to handle this, we could deal with this in a very delicate manner. I believe that that is the way to go forward. We cannot let the trial go forward, because if the trial goes forward, then everything will be exposed. And our 16%, which is already bad enough, may be like be horrible i'm, I'm a role play i'm just going to use that to spin special to do damage control like uh you said i also uh recommend uh president sean that as soon as this conversation is done and the special forces extract him uh, you immediately uh, not let that story develop and you immediately uh call upon the chinese mainland to begin negotiations on the south china sea and we can begin to conduct those and if you take a very forceful lead on that and make sure that taiwan is uh, very involved i think it would do a lot to make the people and the voters of taiwan uh, be more open to kumantang re-election uh, very well uh make sure this is spotted because if this gets exposed then there's there's no way we can do anything i'm aware no do you add a role play do you want to do like a, a roll or something to see if they get they succeed yeah sure Cool. Uh, I don't know how to do that really. I can do I can do a dice roll. Okay. Yep. We'll so that. we'll say uh, I'll roll a d20. So if they if they succeed, then like, one through uh, we'll go one through twelve is a success. If they fail, is it exposed? Thirteen or? through nineteen will be a failure, aka uh, it will look like a botched assassination attempt or something, but no one knows where it happens. And then a 20 will be that uh, the whole thing is filmed. Everyone knows China tried to do it, and uh, it's just public knowledge at that point. Sound good? Yep. All right. So, uh, 
on. Let me get, we'll 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 get a dice roller really quickly. I'll stream it too so people know this is a legitimate thing. I was a one. So that's a success. Perfect. That is what we wanted to hear. In that case, the special operation, I am going to move my troops in there just for, for fun, though. Uh, yep. It is going to succeed. I'll do that right now. I'll, I will do a post mm. on that later. But uh, Sorry, if I just go in. Uh, Chairman, there's a UNSC meeting called by Russia. Um, you are requested to, to be present. Very well. I will send an envoy just a moment. I'm dealing with a, a very uh, strategical action right now. Okay. I, get, I grabbed out of it. I could um, kind of deal with the repercussions at home, suppress the story as much as possible, and then once you're done with the UN Security Council meeting, we can talk about this. Yeah, uh, President team. Shin, uh, my special forces do currently have uh, the former president in our custody, and we'll be bringing him back to Beijing. It's right, well, a, an operational success. That is perfect. Well, while I go attend this UN Security Council meeting, I would suggest that you uh, start aggressively in the media uh, advocating for mainland China to negotiate with Taiwan and the other uh, Southeast Asian countries over the redrawing of the uh, South China Sea zone. I'll do that immediately. Wonderful. We will speak very soon. Goodbye. He is the aggressor here. If he does not leave our territorial waters by the end of this month, true, of Turk. July, so true. My I, I, I mentally felt the same thing. <laughs> will be ordered to shoot to kill. You have violated our rights to these territorial waters. You have violated every single treaty that the United Nations has made about territorial waters and international waters. You entered our territorial waters with aggression. You have shot at our, our, our jets who are patrolling and defending our territory. You are the aggressor here simply because we want to make nuclear power. You are the one violating every single right. And you want us to have advisors simply because you are scared because your ego, Mr. Putin, is inflated by 7,000 second uh we need to go to the unsc channel because it's so the game controller like wants to handle things yeah uh, all the permanent go up please all right yeah Escape right. right. everybody yeah. all right um only the permanent members are allowed i'm, I'm, I'm not afraid. allowed to be here even though it's against me yep that's that's how the unc works right. yeah it is very uh questionable yeah. in its fairness <laughs> yeah. uh, i think we have many topics to bring up yes also the, f the topic is uh on the issue we brought up the russian delegation brings the following issue up uh australia is trying to develop nuclear weapons we demanded them to uh, no that is not the case let me let me just speak mr mr representative of the uk no. They are trying. They are trying to develop nuclear weapons. We demanded them to to open up the case. They refused. We hereby called the USC meeting. There is right now a tense standoff uh, between the Australian, the UK, um, the, the Russian, and the American Navy. And this Wait, is where is where is this currently way. happening? In the uh, let me see how the sea name is. I would, I would like to stay. Uh, Arafura Sea. I would like to state that the US is only watching as a neutral third party. We're not taking sides. It's a neutral fleet that's arrived. Yeah, it's, yeah they're, they're just observing. Yeah, I'm going to send and... a detachment of Chinese destroyers down to uh, patrol in the uh, Bonda Sea to the north. Mm -hmm. Oh, what just happened? I made a post about this before. Oh, okay. This was going to... Well, it was going to... So the Russian proposition right now is that first the, the the Australian Navy is to go back to its waters and allow the Russian Navy to patrol international waters towards Australia. The second request from Russia is that Australia has to open up its nuclear research sites to see if there are nuclear weapons development or not. This is our this is our two requests right here. You are now open to speak about this, otherwise we will begin the voting process. I would also like it that if, if Australia also agrees to have international observers watch them. No, make sure yes. Not, he will not yes. agree to that, I'm afraid. Is, is Being then, unwilling to agree to UN observers in the in his in his uh, nuclear production facilities is dangerous at best and yes, we are US makes him almost guilty of what's being suggested at worst. Yep. So, 
We would like to bring to the attention of the UNSC that French France did invest uh, two nuclear facilities into Australia about a year and a half ago. They are purely for energy, and I do believe this is the prime motivation for the Australian government to pursue such technologies. It is the prime motivation. And uh, Britain uh, will be watching over this with a heavy hand. Do not worry about that. Watching over and guiding uh, Australia in any way we can, making sure that they do not go down the wrong path. I assure you, Mr. Flanagan. Yes, but we request Russian uh, observers as well, as well as Chinese. Uh, China does not explicitly want observers in this situation. We want the UN observers in it, which we're happy to cooperate with. Yes. Yeah, we need we need yeah, this to be so. done by the right legitimate authorities. <laughs> I agree. I agree as well. Yes, US also agrees. So uh, then let's begin official voting process, I, I guess. Can I this? Is you can. You are yeah. you are yeah. yeah so I will begin the voting process right now. Um China? What if China agrees. Uh, on the on the on the UN observers. Okay. Uh French? France? We could agree. So this is a yes? Yes. Okay. Uh, America? US also agrees. We need to stop people from proliferating nukes. Alright. Rush done. Russia is also in favor. UK? Uh, I would like to veto it. Right, uh, and the resolution fails. Uh, reminder, a reminder, um, the game controller said if... China would like see... explicitly to hear a formal statement publicly televised from the United Kingdom as to why they disagree to this. We'll do it. I'll make sure that happens. No, I'm, we're asking for it right now in this meeting. This is a publicly televised uh, meeting. Mr. Well, Mr. Uh, Ambassador, I would like to explicitly hear the United Kingdom's reasoning for this. Okay. As you may not know, me, Canada, and Australia have been joining closer ties with each other. We will not back down with our, what our ally desires, which is nuclear energy, not nuclear weapons. So I do not see a reason why Russia is so hostile towards this, my friend. Are you uh, willing to explicitly give evidence to the Security Council that they are not, in fact, uh, producing nuclear weapons? Do you have any documentation that would explicitly uh, leave this council without a shadow of a doubt that this is not being ha uh, happening? I do not have the documentation, uh, documentation currently, but I can assure you, British observers will be sent there and we will watch over the Australian... Why is it that you do not feel it reasonable that the United Nations, an international body legitimized and recognized by every major uh, country and actor in the international community, uh, should not be used to put this question uh, to bed by sending a, a, a couple people to ensure that this is what's happening? For if it is simply nuclear power, there's nothing to be done here. Exactly, you've explained it perfectly yourself. Wonderful, so why is it that if you it own, would not allow them to be sent? Nuclear power, why is Russia making such a big deal of it? Exactly, so why can't we simply decide this and, and understand this and allow you and observers to go check and as soon as they confirm that there's nothing there, just allow this issue to uh, be no longer a problem? It is not my choice to make what you and observers. It is your choice to make. You were on the UN Security Council and you just vetoed this proposal. Yes, I know, but Australia will say no to that. They are completely against that. And it I doesn't matter if they say no. If they say no, then there needs to be a much more serious conversation here. Is the United Kingdom a puppet of Australia? Hold no, on, no, we, do, we don't need to be saying such inflammatory oh, things. The, the Chinese delegation does not okay. wish to this to be a, a, a boxing match between major world powers. I have got written confirmation that Australia is not uh, pursuing nuclear war, warheads. You will forgive me, but written written reasoning is not enough. We, we need evidence here. <sighs> then I am out of options, my friend. There's only so much I can do. So you're still vetoing it? Yes. Alright, then the resolution fails. Uh, the game controller uh, said if this fails, we have to call our general assembly. After this. Yes. Very well. To, yeah. yeah. So a UN meeting. Okay. Alright. Uh, can you help me grab your body? Yep. Alright, thank you. Hold on, I'm facing a bank crisis right now. I'll be right back. Okay, okay. <laughs> 
Despite a hot, delicious latte art espresso in your China, Zhang Zemin Cup, this is not a good day. God fucking damn it. Desperate financial moguls, their lobbyists and politicians have made contributions too. All are storming the Chinese government offices and all have the same message. We need a bailout. Apparently, the dual shock of the housing downturn and the stock market crash were too much for the financial sector to handle. The build up of bad debts from the speculation is simply too great. There needs to be an inflow of flush government money, or these will be bankruptcies across the board. We're going to have to bail them out. We'll go ahead and do it right now. I left field question is Northern Sentinel Island a thing in MD? I think so. No, it's not. Nope. Because it's like right there. You can't see it on the map, so no. What's up, Hoffman? Have I used my army once? Yes, we sent a special force division to Taipei to uh, extract the old president. So yes, technically. Okay. But I recommend that you watch closely at this disease. It's... We have no idea what this could do to the, the world. I must bring. Well, we're going to the UNSC. I, uh, I think I grabbed everybody. Okay. Oh, let's, go to, let's go to the United Nations oh, thing. No. Sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt, but um, we, Australia will accept US observers. If, if that makes any difference at all. I would, I would, I, I want the entire United Nations Security Council to have observers. Yeah. The French president, I need to talk to you real quick. Urgently. Okay, good to ask you. Or, okay. All right, let's go uh, up to the UN, United Nations thing. <sighs> okay. Right. To the stage. Got moved. Where the fuck is it? There it is. Excuse me, could you do me a favor? Pick up the French puzzle, please. Thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, uh, I think everyone is here. Uh, I'm glad to say this is a uh, extraordinary meeting of the UN General Assembly. This is not a normal meeting. This is a extraordinary meeting to talk about the emergency in Australia and Russia. Now, expect some resolution to be passed here. You will be voting. If I'm correct, it's a two-thirds majority vote. So let's hope this does not fail because this is our last stance. All right, uh, I'm going to start with... Uh, Anyone seen uh, anyone seen the delegate, delegates of Australia in here? There he is. Right, do you want to recognize the delegates of Australia? We'll start with speech. Hello, with speech, my fellow, and then we'll go... uh, oh. Sorry, let me just announce something again. We're going to start with speech, and then we're going to go to the resolutions. Hello, fellow uh, nations of the world. I come to you today with uh, a grievous act of violence against the people of Australia. We have been developing a nuclear energy program to supply free energy to the people as we believe energy, healthcare, education, and basically all walks of life um, in Australia should be allowed to have those rights to those three main things, as well as food and other, other necessary things to live. We've been trying to develop these nuclear powers for some time now, and we have finally developed these nuclear power plants uh, in full. Russia, however, believes that we are trying to develop a nuclear weapon. We are not. We have evidence to prove such. We have not even gone down any path or have made any policies or have passed any type of bill or executive order to do such. We are not looking to build nukes. We are looking to build simply free energy for our people. However, Russia decided to violate our territorial waters, our territorial waters, not their territorial waters, ours, with hostilities. They have launched missiles towards our air force, towards our fleet, which actively patrol these regions, putting my people's jeopardies, our lives at risk, and we will not stand for this. If Russia does not leave our territorial waters within five days, we will launch 
all of our Air Force and Navy, along with our military as well, to defend ourselves. Because of such violations, I believe that the United Nations should pass a binding resolution forcing Russia to leave these, inter uh, these territorial waters that are owned to us, as well as sanction them for their hostile actions against us. We are willing to accept observers from the nations of the United States, the UK, France, Germany, the free nations of the world along with China, who has not shown any hostilities at all. The only one, the only <laughs> nation that will not be allowed to send observers is Russia. If a single Russian enters Australia, they will be met with an arrest. This is period. This is not negotiable. We will not accept anything other than this. If you wish to have observers come and see that we are not developing nukes, that is fine. But Russia will not be allowed to partake in that. Russia is the one that has been the hostile one here. We've had to resort to defending ourselves. If they do not leave in five days, and Russia, I know you're hearing this, just remember that, uh, just remember that this was your fault. You're the ones that, you're the, you're the one that brought this hostility against us, not us. You're the ones that entered our territorial waters. We didn't enter yours. We never even threatened you. Yet your tyrannical ego that you have is what caused all of this. And if you do not leave our territorial waters within five days, we will we will defend ourselves to the fullest extent. And we will show no mercy. That was all. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Again, I'd like to keep the speech in one minute, please, so we can... Uh get this as, and as quick as possible. The UN recognizes the delegates of Russia. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Australia has recently shown signs of developing a nuclear weapon, and uh, we presented Australia with the possibility of accepting observers, Russian ones, or even UN ones, into their country. They denied this. This has been brought up again at the UNSC meeting, which uh, the UK has vetoed which we find utterly um, disastrous to our relations and also um, really, really uh, dangerous to the world. Russia, in response, has sent a navy towards the Australian uh, coast coastlines to put a little bit of pressure towards Australia. And we are not seeking any war to, with Australia, but we want to make sure that Australia is not able to nuclear weapons. They have not shown any evidence that they are indeed not developing nuclear weapons, and therefore we propose that a UN force, uh, a UN observers will enter Australia to look for any signs of development of nuclear weapons. And if they find them, we demand Australia to dismantle uh, these operations and only ensure and bind themselves legally that they only develop uh, civilian nuclear technology. If this does not uh, bind, or if this does not work, or if uh, Australia does deny this, uh, Russia will be forced to carry out a uh, strategic strike on the nuclear facilities uh, that Australia possesses. Thank you. Thank you very much. Fucking, the, you're not wrong, mate. The the delegates of United Kingdom. Hello, everybody. Now, the Russian president continues to pursue a very aggressive path. And with this uh, call for UN observers, I argue that so many other nations have nuclear power and nuclear weapons. Now, the U the Australia is not pursuing nuclear weapons. They are only pursuing nuclear energy. And I argue, why do they need observers? Why? It is a completely unneeded cause. Now, Russia continues to be aggressive by sending its fleet and demanding UN observers or a UN-led uh, attack, or is that what they say? Now, I assure you there is written evidence and proof that Australia is not pursuing nuclear weapons and I will personally oversee this to make sure it does not happen. We're staying out of this, by the way. Um, the 
UN recognizes. Let me just check who's on the right. Ch China would countries. not get involved with this. We just try and stay neutral, which we're going to do. Then recognizes the delegates of Canada. We can let the Russians be the bad guys here. Hello, gentlemen. You know, I, I had family who perished in the Second World War. My, my father fought in the liberation of the Netherlands in 1944 to yep. 45. And I have to say, I've never felt such a grave loss to myself. War is a cruel and vicious place. It is a hellish hole of pain and suffering, and I do not wish to tread into it. But there's also another reason. There's also another issue with this dispute: sovereignty. The question of sovereignty. Australia wishes to pursue civilian infrastructure, infrastructure that can guarantee the lives and successful prosperity for the people of Australia. And I see no issue with them pursuing this. The Australians have been open with their intentions. They have shown proof and evidence that they have not pursued nuclear weapons. But yet the Russians send an armed fleet. They send forces, weapons of war, and wish to cast down Australian sovereignty. And that's why I say we should back the Australian position. That we should allow the Australians to freely develop their nuclear arsenal of civilian infrastructure. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. The UN recognizes the delegates of the United States. Right. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. US, uh, I was not... Both France. The US uh, wishes to... wishes to state that... that all UNSC should be allowed to send observers as it should as we will be doing the same to any nation that should develop a, nu a nuclear reactor yes please we also wish to state that i strongly urge that this motion i strongly urge that we do not economically sanction russia or do anything against a unsc member however i do see it that this could have been easily avoided if it was brought up in a UNS in a UN matter sooner than later. This could have all been avoided. The US wishes to state that Australia, if willing to allow international observers, should be allowed to have nuclear energy as long as it agrees to the non-nuclear proliferation treaty that it so signed. As long as it upholds that, US has no issue with Australia developing green energy. That is all. I wouldn't say he's comparable to Beria. He's very okay, different, Jacob. Very much. In some ways. Uh, the UN recognizes the delegates of Ukraine. Agreed. My Let's go. fellow compatriots, uh, I have come today to speak on this topic uh, I believe this was a miscommunication uh, on the part of the Australians in the receival by the Russians uh, I have spoke with both of them semi extensively on both this topic and I believe that after this meeting uh, or while this inspection is going on it would be fair for Mr. Putin to retract his fleet out of territorial waters of Australia. Uh, but I do believe that Australia should go through with allowing the inspection as any other country that uh, secure, uh, goes towards securing nuclear power should have to obligate as I once did as a uh, nuclear energy provider as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. The UN recognizes the delegates of France. Thank you. Merci. Uh, bonjour, members of the United Nations. Uh, we would uh, like to show our support for the uh, observers within Australia. However, we would also like to warn the Russian Federation that two of these nuclear power plants are, are French property and any strike conducted on French property will be uh, confronted with a economic sanction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
I think there's one else. Let's speak if I'm missing someone, please make yourself present. If not, I will start announcing one thing before we start resolutions. Yeah, we're not, we're Due not to resolution 2758, which restored the People's Republic of China to the Chinese seat at the UN, Taiwan will not be a part of the process of voting. So, my apologies, we, uh, Taiwan will not be able to vote. Um, in that case, I'd love to uh, hear the resolutions that the countries are offering. If you have any resolution, please. Uh, I do apologize. I clicked the, I, uh, I clicked the wrong button. I do apologize, twins. One second. Oh, how don't I? Uh, uh, again, if you have any resolutions, I'd love to have it on DMs, and I'll present it here, and we'll start voting on a two-thirds vote. Before we start the resolution, I will, uh, the UN recognizes the delegates of China. Greetings. As many of you know, China has implemented a two-state solution. Although things are very complicated between both uh, mainland and uh, the Taipei portion of China, we are beginning to build a modern relationship where we understand the situation that we are in. China has no interest in being hostile with the Taipei government anymore. And as such, what we would like to propose to the General Assembly right now is the inclusion of Taiwan into the United Nations. Uh, now, due to the chairman's request, this is a not ideal situation and time, but since right now is the resolution we have got, I will put it up to vote on the General Assembly. Again, this is a two-thirds vote. I will call each country to announce their vote. If they have not reached reach the two votes, uh, sorry, the two-thirds vote, we will not be uh, eliminating the resolution 2758. Again, the I would like to announce the resolution we're voting on is to revoke the resolution 275H, which restores the PRC to the Chinese seat in the UN and expels the Republic of China, especially Taiwan. All right, gentlemen, I will call uh, nation by nation, and if uh, your answer is yes, abstain or no. I will start with Egypt. Uh, uh, Egypt, if you please could state your vote. I would like to say yes. Thank you. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Sorry about Saudi that. Uh, sorry, everyone. Yes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. The United Kingdom. I vote yes. Perfect. Australia. Yay. Thank you. Um, uh, the United States. Uh, the US votes yay. Vote yes. Thank you very much. Canada. The Canadian government says yes. Thank you very much. Russia. Hello, can you? Ah, sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we vote yes. Russia vote yes. Thank you very much. That's eight votes. Uh, Ukraine. Uh, Ukraine would like to abstain. Abstain. Thank you very much. France. Uh, the Z French Republic abstains as well. Thank you very much. Brazil. Uh, Brazil votes yes. Votes yes, thank you very much. That's nine votes. Um, Bangladesh. Oops, sorry, I take you out, you can come back. Bangladesh abstains. Thank you very much. China. As China brought forward this motion, we will of course vote yes. Thank you very much. If I miss any country, please raise your hands or step to the stage to announce your vote. If not, I will declare the results. And I will be shutting down the voting. Uh, Sudan was not brought up. Sudan. Uh, oh, Sudan. I'm sorry, I totally forgot about Sudan. Check something here. As well as Turkey was not brought up either. 
Is Turkey in here? Uh, yeah, Turkey's in here. And uh, Sudan would, would want to say that we find this a disgrace that the UN forgets about our great country and we abstain. <laughs> you apologize. I, I put my deepest yeah, apologies. I better, I better have some champagne in my hotel room tonight. That's don't worry, don't worry. Me. I think, I think <laughs> New York has some good champagne. Okay, thank you. You can check. Alright, um, with that, I will just make a quick calculation here. Turkey, sorry. Oh my god. Uh, Turkey, I apologize. <laughs> Take your vote, please. Turkey says yes as well. Alright then. Thank you very much, Turkey. You can come back. With a quick math here, all right. Is what? Jordan, uh, announce, Canadian? Uh, be announcing the vote. The resolution has passed with reaching two thirds with 11 yes and three abstentions. Ladies and gentlemen, the resolution, just check what that was again. Resolution 27, please. Resolution 2758 is revoked and Taiwan could uh, reapply to the United Nations. Going on for the next uh, resolution. Uh, just read out the resolution here, gentlemen. Uh, gentlemen, I will uh, propose a resolution here. This is concerning the Australia and Russia question. Uh, all right. Oh, Let me see the resolution chicken. here. Russia demands that Australia allows UN observers. Yeah, Canadian, Russia what's the context of that, man? If they do not comply, they propose full sanctions on Australia as well as UN backed surgical strike carried out by the Russian Air Force on the nuclear power plants. I will <laughs> copy this and I'll send it. What's up, Martino? I, I shaved it. I, I will grow it back, though. Just propose this here. Uh, gentlemen, let me just read out the resolution again in case you have missed. Russia demands that Australia allows UN observers, including Russians, one. If they do not comply, they will propose full sanctions on Australia, as well as the UN-backed surgical strike carried out by the Russian Air Force on the nuclear power plants. The voting will start now. Again, if you need, if you do not understand the resolution, ex uh, uh, I will send you on DMs. I'll call each nation oh, for shit. a vote nice of Canadian. this resolution. Before I start this vote, would anyone like to speak? If not, I will call each nation. Work. Work, Martino. Do you, do you recognize this? The delegates of Australia. I would like to just state one thing. Um, you know, I, Australia has not even been able to make a proposition for a resolution at all. And for airstrikes to be conducted by Russia after they've already made hostile actions without even reaching out to the UN, violating UN treaties around and surrounding international waters and territorial waters, I believe that this resolution should be thrown out. You could send it to Grisha head. Putin. He'd probably this love to do it in a, in a cosplay. Resolution to even, like, to even suggest... What did that, Alex? I thought it was strike. interesting, but and I didn't read a ton about it. Their aggressive behavior with little to no evidence. I don't know much about Kazakhstan politics. Heads. This entire time, they have been making a bold and Same absurd claim. They have no evidence that we're making nuclear warheads. They have no evidence that we are making anything other than civilian-related um, nuclear power. They have nothing. They have nothing other than the lies of Putin. The lies of Putin. And then this is all this is about. And with that, I would like to make a uh, proposition for another resolution, if if possible, to the General Secretary. I can send that through email if you would like. Oh, please do. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Before I even uh, start, um, if Taiwan wishes to reapply, they will have to send me a letter uh admitting to the charters of the un and then security council will have to deliberate this passes then we can go for the assembly uh, ladies and gentlemen i will again so uh, crazy how you doing man uh talk about the resolution again i will call uh nation by nation really quickly again i got three minutes left so nation by nation i will call egypt let to say yes Yes, thank you very much, Egypt. Saudi Arabia. 
We would like to abstain. Abstain. That's We're gonna abstain right. as well. I'd like to call you not a kingdom. I would like to say no to that. Thank you very much. I'd like to call Australia. Glad to hear that, man. Yeah, it has been a while. Hope, hope everything no. is good over there. Thank you very much. I'd like to call uh, the United States. No, no, due to the use of airstrikes, use of force should not be enforced in a resolution. Okay, that's good enough. Thank you very much. Uh, Canada. Oof, he's not wrong want though. To say nay on the resolution. Thank you very much. Um, Sudan. Uh, we would like to abstain. Thank you very much. Russia. We vote yes. We vote yes. Thank you very much. Shocking. Uh, Ukraine. Uh, this is a tough decision for Ukraine to make on this part, but we say yes. Thank you very much, Ukraine. Uh, Turkey. Republic of Turkey abstains. Thank you very much. Brazil. We, Brazil will have to abstain. Thank you very much, Brazil. Uh, France. Due to the potential threat of our two facilities, we will have to put more. Thank you very much. Bangladesh. Um, Bangladesh abstains. Thank you very much. And China. The People's Republic of China will formally abstain from this vote. Thank you very much. I, I would like to also change my vote. I didn't realize this was actually saying airstrikes go. I apologize. Alright, so what is your vote? No. The Italy, I really like the Italy one, Jacob. I really like the Italian well, yes, focus tree. It's really, I really enjoy it. The resolution is out of the table. Uh, again, it's two thirds, so it wasn't even close. Hey, gentlemen, I think we have reached the limit. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will be concluding the assembly right now as we have reached the time. Uh, we'll continue this uh, next session. We have many other resolutions to go through and the uh, replication of Taiwan to the United Nations. So, the Security Council will be aware of that. And uh, that will conclude the General Assembly meeting for now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for uh, attending this. I appreciate it. All right, we're going to stop here. The game is going to end. It has been five hours, so we're going to stop and go raid someone. This has been a really interesting game. We've been doing kind of what I wanted to, but there's been a lot of really interesting events that are make this going to be really good. Yeah, we're not going to go with Xi Jinping. We are going to go with more of a market liberal capitalism with socialist policies, open up to the world kind of uh, WTO policy for China, which will be really fun to roleplay out. Uh, this will go for at least four sessions. We might go for more. If the roleplay is really good, we might make this a really long term one. So if you want to watch more, you can continue to watch it next Saturday. Right now, let's go raid someone. Lou's streaming, but he's always streaming. Well, let me see if there's anyone else I know to raid. Otherwise, we'll go raid Lou. Ah, we're gonna go raid Requin. I haven't raided him in a long time, and he's a cool guy. He's playing some Boy 4 right now, so if you wanna watch some more uh, interesting streams, check him out. He's a really cool guy, really, really chill, just a chill Scottish guy who does some some great stuff. We'll go raid him. Um, like I said, we will continue this game next Saturday. It starts at 12.15 EST. It goes to 5.15 EST. Uh, it goes for five hours. This is a tiered game. If you want to get into games like this, join the Discord, play in our games, share yourself to be a good role player, and then you can join tiered games like this. I think it went really well today. I was really happy. I enjoyed it a lot. So this was good. Uh, tomorrow I am going to stream a bit of EU4, and then I will not be back streaming until next Wednesday with some Dungeons and Dragons. So, alright guys. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good night.